Uh, yes, it is a boring league by comparison because not a lot of crazy stuff going on. Um, because it that is how it is. Like when you go from super high intensity hounds everywhere to not really high intensity hounds or like not hounds, it changes up people's perceptions of the whole league. But welcome back to Stream Team Vertanum. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Glad to have you here. Thank you so much for tuning in. What's up? Welcome back. Yeah, it's a very low pressure hardcore league. Important note, I don't think that they need to have like, you know, easy leagues. But what I will say is that I am happy to take a break from the Hounds because as I said, the Hounds were fatiguing. As we got towards the end of the hardcore league, it was just exhausting to always have to figure out how you're going to deal with the Hounds and how they're always going to be like around every corner. It was just it was just tiresome and I'm glad that is not the case uh, currently. The fact that you can even take a break. If you need to take a five minute break, so let's just say you ate, you know, uh, a couple Big Macs before you started playing. You load into the game, you're having some fun, and then all of a sudden, boom, disaster strikes and you have to go to the bathroom. It's an emergency. Well, you better clench because if you have to AFK in the quest, unfortunately for you, uh, DDO would kill you. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happier with the current setup, current set of results. You've been told the disciples of rage level two cap? I don't think so. I don't think level two cap is hard. The guards are the local shopkeepers. Case in point, I leveled first day level two cap, and this character level two cap. So, well, it's level three actually. But this character is having no issues. I have ship buffs though. But yeah, whatever. Semantics. It is harder than plus four, but I don't think that plus two is hard. That's just what's on the regular server. They said, from my perspective, I think it was the hounds. Is there room? You bet there's room. I'm going to turn off this puzzle here. Set this down. There's only two dangerous, one dangerous part in this quest, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Thank you, Halvro. Appreciate it. And it's not this outside section. It's inside here. There's a section with some slads that can knock you down. Just need to be careful about that. Also, I need to buy more emotions of haste. They'll still complain. Oh, I I understand. I'm just saying that I don't think that that's like the hard part. Yeah, plus zero would be a little bit more challenging. That'll be a lot more interesting. You have to do the quest on level, so you're actually under level at the end of the day. Like that would be an interesting challenge. But I think plus zero is the same, or the plus two is the same way we played on the regular servers. I don't see it as that being that big of a, a shift in own. Again, hardcore being hard, I don't have a problem with. Um, it's just when you get fatigued from not being able to even take a single break inside of an adventure. I know why they did the Hound thing. I thought it was cool. I'm not saying it was a bad league. Um, but when I played, I played for the whole three months because I, you know, wanted to make content for it, help people level up and get through some stuff. I did a lot of Reaper mode on that league, helping people get, uh, get up there. I think it was top 10 on Reaper XP, I think. Or top 15, one of the two. I don't remember. But uh, I did pretty well. Up to threes and champions is level three. I can imagine that because when, for those of you that don't remember, when Reaper Mode first released, that was actually how Reaper Mode worked. You had to do the quest on level, not over level. So everyone was used to doing two levels over for a bravery bonus. And for Reaper Mode to get full Reaper XP, you had to do them on level. So you'd have to do your twos on two and your threes on three and your fours on four. That changed up everything for Reaper leveling. They ended up changing that and how that works, so it was just followed bravery bonus. But yeah, when that first came out, woo! Tell you what, that was an exciting experience. So you can always make it a self-imposed challenge. Oh, for sure. Anyway, so the dangerous part here are the slads, as I said. They're the dangerous monsters in this room. They are quite spooky and scary if you're not prepared for them. They resist every element, so my extra fire damage doesn't do a whole lot. Fortunately, they can apparently be instant-killed very easily by uh, Lara Fey, who is just constantly throwing out destruction and killing people in one hit, which is pretty cool. Dude, I'm not even killing the monsters in this room. It's all Lara Fey. I'm a fighter. I'm supposed to be fighting people, and it doesn't matter. Damn. Makes their saving throw. 
I hate that. 59 DC and they make their save. Damn you, monsters! Important note, that's when a monster rolls a 20. Is when they make their save like that. If you're wondering why I'm doing this quest in particular, it's because um, there's a couple items that are pretty good out of the Age of Rage chain. And so I want to see if I can get a couple of them. And so there's there's quite a few good items out of this chain. Um, the first quest has a helmet that is quite good for this build. The second quest has a... Um, or like a strength... This quest has a strength helmet. The second quest has a good constitution helmet. And the third quest has a really, really powerful shield. Um, so if I can get any of those, I'll be pretty happy. I'm not guaranteed to get any of them, of course. But, you know, hey, if something happens, you never know. Maybe I'll actually get an item that I want and feel good. I'm just going to do a couple here for some extra stuff. I could also just move directly into Sharn, but, you know. Get some more XP as we go. Get my water to drink it, and then I start, just kept talking. There's water drinking time once this guy dies. Oh, important note, don't kill Halvro in one hit. If you do, it bugs at the quest. So if you, like, overlevel this quest, coming back for favor and you're doing it on Heroic, um... The disciples of Rage you don't want to just one-shot him. But it's not our doing. We are merely here to celebrate the end of it. Here we go. Get this guy out of the way. Kill Halvro. Chunk him down, baby. Get him out of here. The curse that destroyed the giants has returned. You hear the cries of an angry mob in the distance. A riot has broken out on the streets of the city. Back, Disciple. Ugh. Just some of these quests can take a little while. I'm also going to show you the fast way to do um, uh, the missing quest as well. So it'll be fast missing I'll do in here. Um, I'll just grab a hireling uh, for Dimension Door, but fast missing is a very cool trick. I think a lot of people, I think many people haven't seen it, so. Pretty cool, man. What fast missing is, it's basically... Um, doing the quest missing. But doing it in reverse with Dimension Door, which allows you to teleport around and get the quest done. That's normally like an 10 to 15 minute quest, done in like three minutes. Now granted, when I say three minutes, I mean three minutes for a character that is more uh, damage per second than my character. Also be very careful about breaking up all these eyeballs here, because the eyeballs do force damage. Force damage is non-resistible, so you can't reduce it with like magic resistance rating as an example. So it's not that you can't make a save against it, it's just magic resistance rating doesn't affect it. So you pretty much always take full force damage, so just be careful when you're dealing with that. Yeah, my shield is very replaceable now. I like the repair amp, but if I can get the one shield that I want. The giant's platter. Ho 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 ho! Giant's platter. Be sweet. Jump over all these citizens. Uh, the Mind Player, by the way, you might not have noticed me talking to the Mind Player. The reason I talked to the Mind Player, I should be talking about the quest, is because the um, he calms the minds of the citizens, so you don't actually have to fight them. Um, so that's why I talked to Fred upstairs. You talk to him, and you talk to him a second time, and he says, like, you talk to him and say, hey, can you can you calm down everybody when you're inside, like, the shop in or the tavern? And he goes, yeah, good idea. And then when you go, oh, yeah, there's people all over the city that must be infected. He's like, oh, even better idea. And he runs off. So you have to talk to him a second time. So just make sure, talk to him in the tavern until he disappears. And then you get to talk to him again at that door. I remember when I first started doing this quest, I didn't realize how people were getting him to move to the second spot. And it's because you have to talk to him twice. Also, remember why I'm not killing all the archers? It's because archers are annoying. I just hate how they don't stand together. So I have to go individually kill them. So they have like, you know, 2,000 hit points and they just take a while to chunk down. So you're going to notice me ignoring quite a few archers as I go forward. Oh, ring the bell to alert the guards. I have to kill all the archers. Just stop running away. Just stand there and die, please. No. <laughs> I just want you to stand there and die. Here we go. You gotta ring the bell twice to open the door. Open the gate. And I'm basically out of all my resources. I'm just kind of fighting all the monsters now. Lair phase out of mana. So pretty much the trick here is just keep attacking stuff and using um, full wind attack. Again, if you have a spellcaster, this can go a lot easier. We did this on Reaper 4 yesterday, and it went really fast. Monsters hit reasonably hard. So that's why I have access to um, Second Wind. 
to heal myself. Because even with, um, like, strike through and everything, it still isn't enough when there's so many monsters, so that's why you need the, the whirlwind attack leaves and other things. You need to make sure you're hitting all the monsters that are around you. Die, Captain Trachus. Gotcha. Alright, come on, helmet! I'm going to quickly go buy more haste potions, because not having haste potions is very annoying. Uh, so I'm just going to go buy a couple more so I don't have to worry about like running out so I can just have some more attack speed. 15% attack speed is pretty important. It's the reason why you see people using action boost haste all the time. It's because action boost haste is basically the highest throughput in terms of damage per investment. Action ac Attack speed scales all of your stats, no matter what you do with your damage. Whether you're non-crit using imbues, whether you're going critical strikes, whatever it is, no matter how you, you sneak attack, whatever your damage is, the more attack speed you have, the more attacks you get to make, and it, it scales every element of your damage. So that's one of the reasons why it's so good, is because it always works with everything. The haste potion, I'm going to buy 97, and then I'm also going to buy an extra 100, so I don't even need to think about it all about running out. I just always have 100 spare on me. Six was Faith themed. Could eight be Vecna themed? Maybe. They could do Vecna themed. I remember when on a previous episode of Dungeons Developer Insights, Linabelle and I went over and we like thought about alternate ideas for hardcore. And one of the ones that I liked was like a competition hardcore between like the different dragon marked houses. So on day one when you logged in, you would have to like received. talk to one of the um Dragon Mark House representatives, and then you would become part of their faction and you'd be competing against other players with PvE-themed faction-type content. Maybe, like, quests completed or Reaper points earned or something like that, and it would be totaled throughout the factions, and then playing on the winning faction gives you a prize or something like that. Hey, your wife and I play with hirelings for healing, but they're too fragile, especially in remote. mode. Any hints to help with improving hirelings' survivability? Yeah, leave the hirelings out of the fights, and then summon them into the fights after the fighting is over. So get them to patch you up after it's done. Hirelings are notoriously terrible for dealing with Reaper mode, so if you want your hirelings to survive, don't let them fight. Keep them out. Keep them on the sidelines, and then once the fight's over, then bring your hirelings in to help you out. What's up, Julia Michelle? How are ya? Welcome, welcome. You're having a good day. And Fed said he weapons, 40k XP. Nice, dude. Yeah, I passed away pretty much all my weapons. I have a I wouldn't say a bad habit. It's a good habit of helping other people by passing out my the items that I get. Um, but I, I just don't keep all the named items I pick up. I think what happens is on Hardcore League, people will say, like, oh, does anybody need this thing when you're farming stuff? And then some people will go, yeah, I need this thing. And then they'll take it and then immediately shove it into their weapon because they need it for their weapon. If there were Reaper perk to scale hirelings better, that would be cool as part of the Reaper tree, actually. I don't think that would be a bad idea. Like a Reaper pet and hireling survivability tree. It'd be kind of cool. They did actually make a change to... Whoa, lag spike. That's bad. That is the worst lag spike I've had so far this Hardcore League. Damn, spooky. It took like half my health and damage. Almost. Oh, because there was hateful stairs behind me. That makes sense. These guys. Hey, Strim. Have hey. you eaten dinner yet, shitters? No, I gotta. I gotta get dinner later. Gonna get it later. I'm really hungry. I ate, um, I've been getting in the better habit of just eating during the day, so taking smaller breaks. And so I had uh, some pita bread and, uh, and an apple. And man, just that energy just gets you right in the middle of the day. Time for cake. Ooh, what kind of cake? Oh yeah, I could go for some cake. Oh yeah, cake. I find I'm very bad at like properly eating at good times. But I'm really good at improperly eating at bad times. That rogue energy? Oh, yeah. If you're wondering why I'm just camping out here, it's 
in no capacity faster to have them run around randomly. And instead, by doing it this, this way, they just all funnel in. I can cleave them down. Easy way to do it. In a particle where everyone only took healing from negative. I don't think they could do that. They might have the power to do that. I don't think so, though. Also, because I'm a Warforged, I actually am totally immune to the poison when it comes down. Uh, so I could just stand out there. The problem is I'm not immune to the knockdown effect from the actual, like, curative bombs that House Jurasco is dropping on these citizens. They're supposed to be medicine bombs. So the medicine comes down and explodes and heals everybody. I don't think it does do that, but that's the idea. Anyways, match their way through all this. <sighs> this is where I find uh, the game really starts to slow down. If you're playing like a very high damage spellcaster or you have a group, you don't really notice the slowdown. But when you play solo, the monster health really jumps up around the 14, 15 mark. And it can be, it can start to feel a lot slower when you're playing the game. Some character classes don't notice it as much. So a, a great example of this is like um, Druid or Sorcerer, because this is when they get a lot of their better spells. By this point, you're level 16. Sorcerer's got um, you know, Chain Lightning, Cone of Cold, Auto Luke's Freezing Sphere, Delayed Blast Fireball. So you have like the tools to make sure your, your health is pretty good. Um, whereas like Druid, they're now just picking up Ice Flowers, hopping into Water Elemental Form, feeling pretty strong. Same thing with like Wizards, now got Meteor Swarm. Um, oh, no, Sonic Blast, I rolled a 1. Oh. But you'll notice that one of the things I do a lot in these quests is use shrines. I know, it sounds spooky, but uh, if you find yourself like running out of hit points or just you know, not able to successfully uh, get through quests with all your abilities, like how I'm using all my action boosts, just use shrines and quests, dude. Hey, Grey Wolf, what's up? How are you? How's your day going? Oh, I was sent a text. I vote for Reaper perk of Ireland scaling. Not only that, I believe that Reaper killing Reapers should grant some instant Reaper XP. Why would killing Reapers grant instant Reaper XP? The rest of the game doesn't work like that, so why would that work in Reaper mode? Like, killing monsters in quests doesn't give you XP. Killing monsters in quests only gives you XP when the quest is over. Oh my god, I can't do enough damage fast enough. The monsters have too many hit points. Go, Larafe. Flee. Keep yourself alive. Oh, oh no! Splatter Guts was slain by a river crab! Oh no! I don't know who Splatter Guts is, but that's a level 20 eating it to a river crab. That's, that's keep on the Borderlands Wilderness. That's like Explorer area. Whoa, that is spooky. Yeah, that's not what I would have expected. Just the shrine, please. All right, we go. Maybe he was a carrier, bad luck at DC. It could be a DC, I don't know. Or yeah, it could be somebody just on follow. Um, yeah, important note, the reason why I'm against like adding Reaper XP into Reapers is because I am actually just, I don't really like Reaper XP in general. Um, I kind of wish that they didn't have, like, Reaper XP, in my opinion, is not a great mechanic because it incentivizes people to do hard content that they otherwise wouldn't feel comfortable or doing or even enjoy doing. And that's that's my general issue with um, Reaper XP and Reaper mode, is that it a lot of people get funneled into Reaper mode that wouldn't otherwise enjoy it um, because they want, like the non-reaper mode bonuses like the extra hit points because there's like you know hit points and constitution other stuff that you get for not playing in reaper mode or for even when you're not playing and then there's also the experience points um, they should get rid of that stuff Whew. 
How much difference does a 30 point build make compared to a default 28 point build? Four stat points. Whatever that equates out into your build. The answer is usually you have slightly less constitution, is what that generally means. Because most builds, you can just take whatever it is you need to take, and you have just a little bit less constitution. Lair phase again almost out of spell points because the amount of hit points on these goddamn monsters. Get them out of here. Oh, there actually is a citizen out here. Which means after gathering some 25 points, Reaper 1 is as easy as Elite, if not easier, because of the Lost Souls. The only. They, there's only one way to have that take. You don't play elite difficulty. It's not true. You can believe it. You can believe it to be true that it's easier. I can understand where people get to that. We've had this discussion a hundred times. If you think that's true, then do a quest on Reaper 1 and then do the quest on Elite and just compare your quest completion time. It's one of those things that sounds true and could be true, but like when you enter Reaper mode, Reaper 1, you do 30% less damage and monsters deal almost double the damage they were dealing before. Right? So if you are playing as a spellcaster and you can go over the top and kill monsters in one spell cast on both Reaper 1 and Elite difficulty, then with the souls, you can find the experience that, yes, it could feel easier, possibly. But every time you take damage and you have to deal with the self-healing problem, uh, which slows you down, and the fact that monsters hit you more often. Also, champions have more effects, so sometimes monsters will be just immune to some of the nonsense that you try to put on them, like different crowd control abilities. Um, like I said, it's just, it's one of those things where when somebody does say that, I know that they don't play Elite very, very often. Um, it isn't easier. I'm not saying that you don't find it easy, but it's definitely not easier than Elite difficulty. Just, if you play Elite Difficulty, you'll go, okay, no, you're right, it's not as easy as Elite Difficulty, but it doesn't feel like it's very challenging. Just scales difficulty to the max, party-wise, and also has the effects of Reaper mode, like the self-healing, the uh, Reapers, the additional um, cha effects on champions, the minus 30% damage on outgoing on monsters, monsters getting plus 4 to all spell, uh, or saving throws versus spells, monsters getting plus to all DCs, monsters getting spell penetration, monsters gaining so many effects. Right? Like, consider that if you go into Reaper 1, monsters gain at least four saving throws versus all your spells. So if you're not over the top, you're going to see a lot of monsters automatically just saving against your spells, just like right out of the gate. And many people can't deal with that. Elite is also scaled to full party. That is incorrect. Fake news. Elite difficulty scales based on the number of party members with 63% of their normal hit points uh, with uh, when you're by yourself up to 100% of their hit points when you have a full party. An elite difficulty. Comfy Vershaw. The monsters don't hit you off enough for me to feel the extra damage for the monsters the monsters make. For sure. I'm not saying that, like I said, you can't have an experience where it doesn't feel like it's that much of an extra jump. What I'm trying to say is that I promise you, if you go onto Elite Difficulty, you'll notice how much easier Elite Difficulty really is. It's just the statement of, I feel like Elite is, is or Reaper 1 is easier than Elite. A hundred percent. I'm not saying it can't be. I'm not saying that you can't find Reaper 1 e easy. When I play my characters on the regular server, I run Reaper 1 all the time because I don't find Reaper 1 challenging. But if I play that those same characters and run the quest through on Elite difficulty, you know, 
Okay, I'm getting distracted. So this quest, here's how you have to do this one. So when you come in, you want to find Bron Pits. He only has three areas that he can actually spawn. One is up here by the Aqueducts. He wasn't here, but that's where I checked first. Also, there's the Mother Scorpion is always here by the Aqueducts. I picked up her little Scorpion Horn. You don't need to collect all of the tools. You just need to collect the one item. That's it. So we're all set there. And then uh, I need to find Bron Pits. He can also spawn up here. I see him there. I just used my, my key, look key, but you can find him up there. Uh, and then once you talk to him, you got to go back to his hut. Again, not saying that you can't find it easy, right? You can find Reaper 1 easy if that's something you've practiced, 100%. I just, I guarantee you, if you actually shove your face into a quest on Elite difficulty, you'll be suddenly cleaving through monsters and just butchering them in so many fewer hits. It's madness. When do they change Elite to not be scaled to full party? Uh... It was over a year ago. They did a rescaling of how the party, like party scaling worked over a year ago. I can't remember the exact patch it was. But they redid party scaling um, a while ago. Relatively recent change. It was in 2021 for sure. I just don't know when it was in 2021. And they posted all the, the numbers about the party scaling. Yeah, I can't remember the exact patch note. I remember the details. Like I said, 63% on um, for one person. Important note, for the purposes of party scaling, hirelings do count as a half of a person. So if you are doing, um, you know, elite difficulty and you summon a hireling, it does count as half a person. Okay, so now that I got Bron Pitts, I talk to him and say, hey, Bron Pitts. And he says, oh, you got to get the ingredients. You don't actually need all the ingredients. I notice how it says optional. Instead, I just go... Whoop, put that in there, and we're done. Hey, Bron Pitts, I think it's done. Now I go talk to Bron Pitts, and he says, uh, go take a nap. So I go take a nap, and then I'm done the quest. This quest is relatively fast if you get one of the two fast routes, which is Bron Pitts on this side. You might also get hit Bron Pitts all the way over there, which one you have to fight your way back, which is very annoying. If you can just get past the anger that boils within. It also applies in Heroic as well. this scaling depends on your class? I don't think that's true. Did on that? I'm pretty sure that the reason is because Epic Elite didn't used to have party scaling. Um, and so that's why that change was made, because they needed to add party scaling to the new Epics when they revamped Epics. Because remember, Update 50 was when they revamped Epics entirely and made it so Epic Elite was no longer, like, this incredible slog to rip your way through. Yeah, class might have an effect. I don't think that's true, though. I don't know where you would even, how you would even compare that. Yes, Slayer Fae, kill everybody. Again, I have I have no uh, evidence for or the other. I just don't think that's true. But it could be. It could entirely be true. As you guys know, I'm I have you know not uh, like I have the ability to be wrong. So, all right, please shield, shield, giant splatter. I'm afraid to look. Do I look? Giant splatter. Nothing. Rats. I ran all these quests with the hope of getting one giant splatter, just one. Big sad. That's when we interviewed a dev. I think it's just or something. Maybe it was your interview with no Bob. I don't know if Bob knows how the party scaling mechanics, or like knows that in detail. Like he's aware of it. Works at the video game company, but I don't know if he he knows about that. I don't think that would have come come up in conversation. Do we do the actual quest? Age of Rage, which drops out of here. Um, Charisma helmet. Little thing song. The necklace, or sorry, the trinket. Do I need this? No, I don't. Are you not using shield of the scorpion? No. 
my shield currently is uh plus four physical resistance 16 heavy darkwood shield of repair amplification 12. I mean, probably, yeah. Just download the transcript off of, like, the closed captioning. Rip the closed captioning off of YouTube and then just control F the whole thing. Alright, I'm gonna get my Agent of Argoness in favor. Please give me my XP. Thank you. And now I'm at rank 84. Might as well level up. Let's go! Level 17! 17! 17! 17! If you're wondering why I'm not using a good shield... It's because this is for a specifically like a, a a guide as it is for people who don't know how to play the game solo or want some tips and tricks to get through quests that have traps and how to do it. And so the benefit of me playing this solo fighter is that people who don't know how to do those things can watch this back. I've been posting the series on YouTube and go, oh, cool. That's a neat trick. I didn't know you could do that. And they can see all these different parts, but I'm not farming because farming is boring. So I don't want to do that. Okay, so by spending the points here in shield expertise. Not only have I gotten more armor class because I, my armor class is higher, but also the expertise applies to my weapons and armor. So now my weapon is a plus seven and my shield is now a plus 10, which is pretty cool. So I get that extra uh, hit chance and damage on both my weapon and my shield, which is pretty nice. Again, I'm gonna be going up here for Salvador Defender because I really wanna get the plus uh, to strength, plus six strength, but I'm not there yet told me to not do any work tomorrow but your boss told you to not do work oh that's rad all right so i'm going to show you the fast way to get through the quest uh, missing this is missing fast uh, this quest can be quite challenging so just be aware there's a lot of scary monsters the method that i'm going to show you fights none of them that's not true one scary monster and the final boss which is a beholder so you know it is what it is but I'm going to show you the fast and easy way to do it to make sure you get the most out of your experience here. So first, I'm going to go re-get my house P-buffs, and then I'm going to show you how to do fast missing. Some of you guys might not know this, so don't blink and you'll miss it. Or don't blink or you'll miss it. Don't blink and you'll miss it. Don't blink and you will miss it. If you don't blink, you will miss out on what I'm doing. So close your eyes and imagine it. Feel it. Feel the experience points washing over you. I don't know I'm going to show anyway. you the way to fight no monsters. Okay, one monster. Okay, two monsters. Bait and switch. Bait and switch! Let's go! How many levels, again, can you be? Uh, four. Yeah. Above base. Yes. Okay, so I need Mikhail the Pious for this. Mikhail! Why Mikhail the Pious? He's a fighter with Dimension Door, which is just really silly. And then since I'm level 17, I might as well have to level 17 hireling. Uh, Nina Tegrin. Defense. Defense. Karenith Mayar is killing everybody type of hireling. Antonio Craft. What a great name. I love Antonio Craft. Uh, what a name. Full Metal, the Paladin. A living holy weapon of wood and metal. Full metal believes a day without blood is like a day without sunshine. I love the descriptions of the hirelings in this game. Uh, I guess I am just sticking with my level 15 hireling, Larifay Doret. Because I want a damage-oriented hireling, because they're quite helpful. I'll buy a couple extras. Alright, here we go. Missing fast. This is when anything to be broken right before Christmas. I mean, that makes sense. If you're working on, like, database stuff, and it's like, look. We have database updates. There's stuff we want to do. Don't make any changes before the holidays, because if there's a change for the holidays, and then we have to fix it, then people have to come back into work. Everyone's on vacation. So just let it go. Which makes sense. You can work whatever you want. Just don't push anything to the servers. All right, missing. It says duration long. Don't believe it, because video games lie to you. You know who doesn't lie to you? Me. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't lie. No lies. Here's how you do it. All right, so first summon the hireling. You're going to need him to cast Dimension Door to quickly get back to the beginning of the quest, which is essential for your speed. Second, talk to Godwick Spurge. Third, get some speed going. So this quest, you're supposed to basically go in a big circle around the district and find out a bunch of bad stuff is going on and then fight a bunch of demons. However, there's a trigger for when the demons actually get summoned. I'm going to skip that trigger so that none of the demons actually spawn. So what you're usually supposed to do is go 
across this way. There's like dogs here. You're supposed to go across this bridge. Is it just one? Oh, no, there's a whole bunch of them. Okay. What you're supposed to do is uh, go across this bridge and then fight your way around this area. However, and then you come out of a grate here once you're done. You do this big circle around this whole thing. You like go around the whole map. Instead, we're doing this backwards. Into the grate we go. And swimming through the water. You can power surge underwater? Amazing. I didn't know that. There is a single dangerous monster, the Mind Flayer Mage. We're going to kill this guy real quick. If he uh, mind blasts you and you fail, you take a bunch of damage. Also, there is a trap here. I'm solo, so it's not going to hit me. But if you're not the first one, you're going to get hit by it. The first person to go through doesn't get hit. So since you're, I'm solo and this is a solo guide, you can just do that. That's cool. Now, here, there's a whole bunch of monsters. Don't leave the water. Just swim at the bottom. That way you don't aggro anything. I'm just casually going for a swim. Do, do, do. Chilling, hanging out, having a good time, drinking potions underwater. Do, do, do. Hanging out, having a good time, ignoring all the monsters, and everything is cool. Then I'm going to throw myself out of here. I guess there's a second Mind Flayer. I forgot about this one. And I missed with my uh, stunning attack. I didn't miss with that. Sucker. Important note, the dogs that are here, if you um, trigger the monsters, you'll notice that if you look around, there are no, um, none of the, the or most of the demons haven't spawned. There's a couple Thrak Hounds here, and these guys can also be dangerous. They cast Phantasmal Killer when they get on their hind legs. So if you see one dancing around on its hind legs, it's because it's doing Phantasmal Killers. You just want to go start hitting it so it doesn't actually finish its spell cast. Oh no, G-String has been slain. Oh no. Grab the armory the account, book. In the account book. Reads, you actually don't need to fight those technically. If you just do uh, or have enough speed, you can just open the uh, door. I'm going to ignore all of these monsters and go up here. Again, there's no, uh, what do you call them? The miscreations? No, the taken. There's no taken here because they haven't really spawned in yet. And I'm going to pull my hireling to me. Grab Sir Borsarian's diary, and usually you'd have to walk all the way back to town. Instead, I just get my good buddy Mikhail here to ship me back. And now I'm almost done. All I need is the last piece of evidence, and it's right next to the end of the quest. Easy. About to rip three divines on a craft? Man, how are you ten levels lower than me and so much richer? That's crazy. Walk over here, kill these gangsters. I'm trading what? What did you even get that's valuable? Madness. Oh, divination cards, I gotcha. Alright. And now hit this guy, get him with the stun. He's dead. I rolled a one versus the Mind Blast. Or no, I rolled a four. I failed. Oopsie. Oh, he didn't go to kill me for some reason. Four, I failed. Is it a will save? <gasps> mind Blast is a will save? Oh, no, that sucks. Well, I'm alive, so it's good. Anyway, grab the attendance book. So uh, if you're playing this on hardcore, make sure you have Death Block or else they're going to eat your brain. If you have if you have Death Block, they can't eat your brain. But if you don't have Death Block, they're going to eat your brain. Payment on delivery. All right. And then we go talk to the guard. I have all the evidence, and I'm done. So I didn't have to fight any of the demons. Usually you would go up here, and it would spawn all the demons. You have to fight your way through beholders and all sorts of other nonsense. Instead, I just skipped all of that. And even with death block? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure death block protects you. Well, I could have died, but hey, it is what it is. Stands in the center of the courtyard. You have what is draped in dreams? Draped in Mr. dreams, Spy. baby. You need six link body armor. Isn't this hard to get? Comes from only the putrid cloister. Hmm. I don't even think I have putrid cloister. Done yet. I'm cursing me, and so I should probably maybe do that map at least once. All right. Now, you don't actually fight him right away. You do have to fight the Taken that are right behind him first. I'm just going to get these out of the way real quick. 
and then we fight the boss. Important note, he is a mildly spooky beholder, so you just want to make sure you have, you know, all your associated stats sorted out. You're not going to die, because he's killing Mikhail the Pious. Stop dying, Mikhail! Mikhail! Live, Mikhail! I don't know why he was eating the hireling, but he was. Important note, this is not a real regular beholder, so their abilities are not the same. They're a Chaos Beholder. Chaos Beholders have different eye beams. So they don't have like the anti-magic cone and all that. Anyway, goodbye, Mikhail. And that's how you do this quest in 5 minutes and 58 seconds. It's quite long. One investigation is complete, but another is just beginning. What'd you succeed? Did you post it? Did you post your success in your craft? I need to know. Here's your treasure. She pointed it out. That's it. The treasure. You gotta loot everything, man. You gotta take everything that isn't nailed down. Um, that's a lot of stats. I don't even know. Armor piercing is kind of good. Now the odds I'll actually find an upgrade from now on are really slim, so I don't see myself actually upgrading any gear before I'm pretty much done playing. And I'm gonna go start working on Charn. Charn can be kind of scary if you're not prepared prepared for some of the things that are going on in here, but I'll show you how to get through. By the way, Shrim, you could have used second wind to break this done. Oh, you're right. I could have used second wind to break this done. I used second wind to break the uh, curse when I got hit by the beholder, so that makes sense. Also, don't Zerg died to a trap. Remember how we had a conversation earlier uh, when I first started this challenge? I explained how Zerging is actually a very advantageous strategy. By Zerging, you can force monsters to go into certain places. And also, if you're running, usually, or not usually, there's a lot of traps that you just kind of bypass because you run entirely through them. One of the reasons why I do recommend Zerging once you become better at the game, because by going faster, you give yourself more opportunities for success. Um, so it's a shame that Don't Zerg died to a trap. Follow the Shrimp Tom banded Zerging method. I don't know why I'm finding these. You can skip these. Oh well. Fine, I guess. All right. So, important note, if you just hug the boat here, instead of actually going towards the center, but you just hug the boat, uh, the monsters actually don't attack you, which is kind of cool. Gotta sprint over here. Hmm, the dagger maw. So then I think I don't have to fight these guys because they could just go inside, but I'll fight them anyway. I'm already out here. This place can be annoying because I have um or my character's limited on my attack speed because your attack speed is slower when you're underwater. So we'll just pop inside. Lara Faye will also teleport with me, which is very convenient. So I don't have to worry about her, you know, getting too aggro and trying to fight all the monsters outside. Being aggressive. Trying to fight and murder everyone. There we go. When I get a lot of critical hits, my character feels pretty good. When I don't get a lot of critical hits, uh, not quite the same. I'm gonna hope that Lara Faye will be okay right here. This this room is kind of sketchy. Lost at Sea is only dangerous for this section alone. Um, right here. Especially when the captain is a Levitus Ice Guard champ. But it's okay, because apparently uh, I don't have to worry about the Levitus Ice Guard that is fighting me, because Lara Faye took care of it. And she just hit everything with command. Again, Lara Faye Doret, ladies and gentlemen, get this hireling. He does good work. Big fan. <laughs> just just a ab all around great hireling. Would recommend, 100%. Up the necromancer. Hey, buddy, get out of here. Negative energy burst. Don't care about that. Put in the discord. Nice. Plus 12 to all resistances. 15% chance to. What? 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 Oh my god! a good item, dude. It's not the best, but that's great. 
power charges and attacks have critical strike. Oh man. You're gonna have to, I, I should sit down with you and like get a lesson on how to craft. I have no idea how people make those items. I have no clue. It's a complete mystery to me. Like I don't even, I wouldn't even know where to get started. Do a hireling Yelp review video, just review every hireling, maybe. You made a video of the craft? Oh, sick. That'll be helpful. Ignores death immunity. Oh, cool. Well, good to know. Okay, so the, it instantly kills you even if you have death block. So uh, just don't get hit, I guess. Don't get stunned. Don't do mind flayers on hardcore. Ah, oh, wonderful. Okay, I'm going to watch that video after because I, I have no idea how to craft items in Path of Exile. That is where I feel like my information is the most lacking. And it's one of the reasons why I never really invested into Harvest. Because, like, I don't know how to do Harvest. It's like, I look at everything and I'm like, who cares about, like, how am I going to use these crafts? I'm not saying that's what you used. I'm just saying that it's another one of those situations where I don't really understand the process that goes in behind that. Uh, can I get anything out of here that I actually want that's good? The bracers are okay, but I don't need them. And I don't want the goggles. Oh, I forgot about this item. Vitality, quality, magical stuff during a double electric absorb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good item. I for, mm, forgot about that one. Can I get more money, which will use harvest? Interesting. Yeah, I have no idea how you do the crafting. Damn. Okay. Okay. I forgot that this item was in the game. Yeah, that's a good one. That's extra health. I don't need the charisma or the feather falling. So where's the feather falling? It's here. Oh my gosh. Buff Dude Arena was slain by crossbow turret. That's um Temple of Elemental Evil Part 1 right there. Do we wiki? No, 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 no. It's not even close. I don't think the wiki will have the information that I need to craft. You know, and I understand essence crafting, but it's still lost on item bases. Yeah, like it's so complicated. You kind of like I make the joke about, oh, you need a PhD in DDO. Dungeons and Dragons Online is a simple game for toddlers when you compare how complicated some of the systems are in Path of Exile. Isabek tells you to take the elevator up to the terrace. Then speak to Lucien Vaunt. Her employer wants you to pass along some information about the Stormreach Beacon. Winter's boarding house, an island of quiet in the hustle and bustle of the city. A general captain nods to you from behind the front desk. A violent explosion shatters the tree. Yeah. If you have a video on it, I will uh I can take a look through that. Yeah, there's also two Path of Exile wikis. There's the fandom website, and then there's poewiki.net. And poewiki.net is the actual good one. The other one is out of date. It hasn't been updated in a long time. The unfortunate reality is if you look it up, the uh, PoE wiki for, um, the, from the fandom is uh, not only out of date, but it also is way more often searched, so there's a lot of bad information on there. But what are you gonna do? You're gonna join the fist bump on trade? Nice, that's good. All oh, right, go after the spellcasters first from Tom. Stop getting distracted by talking about Path of Exile tra trade chat. Stop running away from me. You can't. Apparently my hireling is really struggling finding their way to me, and I don't know why, so I'm gonna keep calling him to me. Anyway, Sharn is gonna take a long time because the monsters just go up a dramatic amount in terms of just general amount of hit points. Um, so it's gonna take me a little while to just chunk my way through all these monsters. I get 20 melee power when I level up, though, which is kind of cool. Kill the trapper first, always. Trappers drop spiders in the ground. These spiders um, explode, and you want to kill those as soon as you can. Uh, 
of 22 upgrades is very satisfying. Yeah, I've never actually seen it. Do you and the other person have to have it? Or is it only one person who has to have it? Only one person? Yeah, because I've never seen it. It probably is something that only you see, if that makes sense. I've been doing some trades. I've been selling stuff. can see. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, I'm a fighter. That's what I do. I am a fighter. I fight everybody that I come across. Again, there's a trapper here. You want to make sure you kill this person as quickly as you can, because if you don't, they will drop a spider that will explode and kill you. Very bad for Hardcore League. Other than that, not, none of the monsters in this room are particularly dangerous. Um, even this Boromar muscle guy is not too bad. Should know. Oh. I, yeah. I mean, he probably would know. Okay. I'm about 700 fusings into my 30% um, chest, trying to six-link it. So we'll see how it goes. The last time I tried to six link something. Oh my god, Black Nemesis died at level 26. Ah, uh, so many people dying at high level today. Um, the way up to the last time I tried to six link something, it took me 2,800 fusings on a 30%er. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know what the average is. But I feel like that's a that's a little bit higher than expected because usually, you know, you can just uh, save up the fifteen hundred fusings and then burn the fifteen hundred fusing craft. But I'm like, no, I will I will greed. I'm gonna get it. It's gonna work for me this time. This time it'll work. This time everything will be different. All right, anything I wanted to hear? Tower shield? No. Uh, uh cloak? The cloak would be kind of good. I would take the cloak. Cloak. Nothing. All right. He seems unruffled by the attack. I have a message. For less than 1k? Yeah. I don't know if there is one. I don't know if that exists. Orb of using probability. Don't think for a moment that you can challenge me in my city. You're just setting yourself up for a fall. Vaughn's companion makes a gesture and the terrace collapses beneath you. I don't know if there is information on that. Blasting Googs. Yeah, Syndicate. It's uh, Hillock, not Haku. Hillock, or Haku is strong boxes. You step into Zealoth Crossfire's tidy office. The Inquisitive calls out to you. Step inside Hilok. quickly. There are eyes everywhere. Ready to go. Let's see what I can find out. There we go. Switch and nods toward the back of the building. You hear the scrape of stone on stone as the concealed back door slides open. You walk out into the streets of Cogsgate. Towers loom high above, so tall they block out the night sky. Anyone who knows what's good for them will stay indoors tonight. A rain of blood has fallen here, and it's up to you to wrap up the mess. According to... DB. I'm just looking this up now because I'm distracted. Is that if an item has a 20% quality, then there's approximately 0.1% chance. You push open the door to the apartment. The surprisingly so about a thousand six link or about a thousand orbs of fusing is what you should expect. So you have a 77% chance of getting it done in 1500 or less. Uh, this is why I don't understand how people get their six links on like the first day. Like six link unique items. It always blows my mind. Right after getting yourself clear, at least he died in the black. After examining the corpse, you can see that he was killed. Does quality above? This is going to sound like a stupid question. Is quality above 20% actually affected, or am I just making it up in my mind? Despite 
and pretending that it works so I feel better about myself. Or I guess worse. to make it past the dusk thugs blocking yeah, your I don't have a uh, I don't have a good uh, dance room for this one anyway I'll just keep dumping fusings into it and eventually I'll uh, I'll let you know what happens it's the biggest single upgrade I can make to my character is getting a six link um, I'm hoping I'll get a six link before I hit level 95, but that's probably not going to happen. I'll probably hit level 95 first before I get the six link. Uh, six links. Hmm, Path of Exile. You know, sometimes you just want to get that, that chance and it doesn't happen. If you're wondering why I'm breaking stuff in here, it's because all the breakables are in these convenient little boxes. And also talking to this Cogsgate residence is also along the way. So I always like to do them in this quest because it's not really that far out of the way. Also, how did I drink a potion I got healed? Oh, I'm lagging. Gotcha. The doors to the gambling hall are wide open and its chairs are empty. Though the nearby tables are still covered with food. Oh, and there's a lot of lag going on right now. Uh oh. Customers left in a hurry. Yeah, the hireling can't even keep up because of the lag. It's very strange. I don't need Sonic Blast. I don't think so. Weird. I don't know if it's happening to anybody else, but there's a pretty big lag spike going on for me right now in Hardcore. Which is weird. That was confusing. It's on 0% gear, 30 gear. More questions about the murders than answers. As you turn to leave, you hear figures. Damn, dude. That's a lot of fusings. the last of this group of Dask thugs and check to make sure there are no more nearby. Now to leave the way you came. 56 links with 50 5,000 fusings left. Times. You head back to the wolf gate where Zealous awaits your resistance. Man, could you imagine spending 150,000 orbs of fusing? Oh my god. Oh no, and Kronu was slain by Gorolin. Gorolin is, of course, the final boss of Black and Blue and is an extremely dangerous dragon. That's one of the reasons why I didn't do it here. Some of you might astute viewers might notice that I've actually been doing black and blue a lot on the regular server. You may be wondering why I don't do that generally for leveling. And the reason is because I do it generally for hardcore, even though I do it on the regular server for leveling. And that's because Gorolin, the final boss, is extremely dangerous and will kill you. Um, the final boss has a damage over time that will just stick on you. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it once he gets its claws into you. Your health just starts going down, and uh, yeah, you're in da the danger zone at that point. You gotta be really careful about Gorolin. It's actually one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like to do it on Hardcore League either, even on Reaper mode, because at the level cap, sure, your dragon, your tank might be strong enough for the dragon. If you lose aggro for one second and that dragon turns around and breathes on the party, that's a full wipe of everybody that's there. And if your tank is able to hold aggro the entire time, when dragons usually have a higher intimidate check to hold aggro on them, um, you then have problem number two of you have to not die to the dragon breath, which is hitting you for like 1800 damage every couple seconds, even with a high amount of magic resistance rating. Black and blue with Necro, okay? That's good! But it can be very spooky. There's no reasons why a lot of people don't recommend it. But I also don't recommend it. Fuck the me, Zealoth. Weird lag. Does he only use the breath in epics? No, he uses it in heroics. It's just probability. Uh oh. She's behind me. And she's dead. And I just want to make sure I'm able to uh, kill kill the trappers before they get their dangerous trap off on me. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't always use the breath every time. A tiefling stands before you with a face you remember. All right, I gotta use the bottom one. 
Hey, wait. I'm actually going to be using the shrine here because I want to get all my action boosts and stuff back. Gotcha. Six seconds. When I, I remember back in the day when I wrote the Shrimp Tom's Fan Guide, my pro tip was you need to be able to kill a monster in six seconds because that's how long the stun lasts. So that's how much damage you want to do. You need to be able to kill a Reaper in R10 in six seconds. Stunning Shield works on Reapers, so you want to be able to hit a Reaper with it. They get stunned, and then you have six seconds to kill them before they get unstunned. And uh, as long as you can do that, then that's where Vanguard really shines. That that little window of single target, where as long as you can kill anything in six seconds, your character is very powerful. It's basically like an assassin. Don't think about Vanguard as like a tank. Think about it as an assassin. You jump into combat. You stun something with the shield. You beat them up really fast with all of your like instant attacks because a lot of things are off the the regular like attack animation chain. And where's the trapper? There she is. She dropped the spider, and I killed it somehow. Cool. After, get him out of here. Uh, formula is HP over 6 equals DPS. And who said you'd never use math? I don't think it's HP over 6, but, you know, I'll trust you, you know? You 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 have an idea as to what you're talking about. I will have faith. The contents of Nairam's pack. Looks like he was fleeing for his life when the murderer got. Not a formula I know, but it's a formula some, some people know. This time you see the pattern. You wonder how you could have missed such an important clue. The slashes were literally the killer's signature. Whoever did this wasn't shy about letting people yeah. know. You find a security ledger in Lost and Font are canotechnic symbol. Okay, let's get this guy dead. Did he kill in six seconds? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you. I thought we were talking about something else. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, that ledger told you what you needed to know. The victims all. Hold on one second. I gotta respond to a message. Um, too much about his operations down in the cogs. You strike down the last of the attackers. My God, I can't type. Let these petty thugs hold you back. Not when you're so close to the truth. You catch up with Zealous and fill her in on Sometimes the you gotta so You gotta take care of some things. Yeah. So this character, of course, not a vanguard, as I said before. This is just a regular fighter. Um just meant to be a Kensai who happens to use a shield, which I actually think is really cool. I like this character a lot. I'm really enjoying playing it. It would be a little bit stronger if I actually had a two-handed weapon as opposed to the uh, bastard sword, but the bastard sword's still working out pretty well. Damage is going really, really good. Um I said, when I get to level 18, I get one cut, which is 20 extra melee power, which is super powerful. And one cut gives the one cut bonus for plus one critical multiplier, which is a lot of damage. Um, and it's very good for my weapon, which crits on a 17 to 20 or 16 to 20. So bring me up to a times four. Very, very noticeable. One cut actually used to affect shields. It doesn't anymore, but it did for a long time. Uh, I remember when Holy Sword used to affect shields. Oh, baby, that was the best. Now I wait for Urk to stop running around because he's dropping bombs everywhere. And once he stands still, that's when I start beating him up. I don't care too much about like the adds that he summons because they'll all just surround me and then I can just kill them all real quick. I mostly just want to get Urk dead. I'm waiting for my next action boost haste before I go in on him. Here we go, action boost haste, get him under half, and then boom, instant kill. And I didn't have my opportunity attack open, so I didn't get the instant kill. Whoopsie. Oh, well, that's why you try to do stuff, right? And poor Lara Fey out of mana again. As I said, these quests, the big thing you're going to notice when you're playing solo is just that the quests take a little bit longer than you might otherwise expect. But nothing too scary is going to be happening in here. Nothing. I don't think I actually want anything out of this quest. Do I need anything out of any of these quests? I'll move on to the next a Sharn docent would be very cool. Can't just stay inside when I don't know which quest actually dropped the docents. Not even if it never stops. Also, this quest is going to blow. This is going to be a very, very long and annoying quest. So, best laid plans is one of the worst quests in Sharn. It's one of the worst quests in the game. 
It's basically just constructs and then monsters that deal force damage, so it can't be resisted. Monsters that have evasion and things with a lot of hit points. So there's a reason why I have 70 potions. I'm going to be drinking quite a few potions in this quest. And the um, fire damage resistance that I have here is essential for getting through this. What about just business? Uh, this is the reason why I can't put Sharn as one of my favorite expansions. I love the story, but best laid plans and just business can jump in a lake. Those two quests can go straight to HE double hockey sticks. I don't want to lose my job. If you'll just follow me, I'll, I'll cough when it's time for us to part ways. What you do up there is none of my business. He sounds quite nervous. Yep, good piece of the one that do it on hard for flagging. Honestly, not a bad idea. Yeah, I hate this quest. Alright, let's go kill the monsters. Alright, one dead. And the important note, the things that are the most annoying are not even the sentries or the golems. It's these, the arcane reconstructors. These things that have more hit points than the golems for reasons I will never understand. Um, and then just run away from you indefinitely and are basically immune to all forms of crowd control. So like the golem, I can just hit him, he's stunned. And then, boom, Golem goes down. Not a big deal. And execute. It's the Arcane Reconstructors that are the annoying part. I hate these. Getcha. Yep. I'll be okay here, but you just have to keep in mind some of the damage. And focus technicians whenever you get the chance to fight them. Okay, so now i got to find the ledger. Where is the ledger? Just business has the docent that I want. I need any docent. No refunds, house of pain, blown deadline, reach for the sky, all drop one docent. Perfect. Every single docent is perfectly fine. I didn't see anything here. Not here. Where is the ledger? Oh, it's in one of these boxes somewhere. I just don't know where. Uh, is it here? Nope, it's not here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just breaking boxes looking for the ledger. It's somewhere in here. Um, you can usually see it because it'll shine through everything. Um, it might be here. There it is. You can see it because it's shining through this crate. I could have just found this right away and skipped this whole room. Anyway, that's on me. Doing that wrong. Also, if you don't have uh, the ability to jump, this quest can be very annoying to get in this little doorway, so just keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to check the puzzles, head over to the right here, and look what it says. And the puzzle is square purple. So this is purple. I'm going to set it to square. One, two, three, four. Now it's on square. And then the orange is red diamond. Set this to red diamond. And the last one you don't know, so you just wait. One. And it, the door opened. I got the optional, so that means the door is open. Important note, when you're doing this quest, don't be on the other side of this door. The door only opens when the monsters run through it. So you don't want to be on the other side of the door. Second, the most dangerous things in this quest are the technicians. They are the highest health monsters. They also cast tactical detonation, which is a um, force damage attack. Very, very dangerous. They also have evasion. So they have more health than the melees. They have evasion. They have everything. So keep that in mind. It's quite dangerous. You want to kill them as quickly as you physically can, because if you don't, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, how do you spawn the next wave of ads? You go next to Victor Dabonair, and then it spawns the next wave of ads. You want to be prepared for that, because when the Tactical Detonation comes out, or Tactical D for short, you want to be prepared to immediately jump on it and kill every monster. Also, apparently my sword is breaking, which is a problem in and of itself, but whatever. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I have to make sure Lara Fade doesn't die, but I'm doing okay for now. Since there's so many hit points. Oh my god, Lara Faye with the instant kill on one of the technicians. Oh my god, she's just carrying the whole quest. Beautiful. Thank you, Lara Faye. She's doing an amazing job. She's going to be a little useless downstairs because she won't have any like uh, mana to actually do anything, but she's doing such a good job here. 
Also, because the monsters have so much health, my sword is breaking from doing these quests, which is not something that happens very often, especially when you group with others. It's not as big of a... Or it's not something that happens as often as, as it is here. Okay. Don't die. Keep killing the technicians. Almost got them. Okay, they're all dead. Whew. The scariest part of the quest is over. Easily the hardest thing in here is just this little deadly hallway where it's one after another, after another, after another, after another of scary monsters. Ooh, how's the damage on the sword looking? Not too bad. Yeah, it's the downside about playing a melee by yourself is you end up just having to hit monsters more often, so then you deal with, uh, especially like a, a, a lower damage melee. You have to repair your weapon multiple times. It can also be bad on a quarter staff as well, but really bad here. All right, so now I have a golem to stop. You get a bonus XP for stopping the golems and killing them before they can destroy the the crates. So that's why I am specifically killing that golem. I'm going to be waiting just for my stunning shield to come back, which gives me a good opportunity to rebuff and get all my buffs up again because I want to be able to stun these guys. I'm going to open with a trip, though, to see if I can trip either of them or both of them, which would be very convenient. Um, get shield up because I'm going to be hit by shield from the arcane reconstructors because they're quite dangerous. All right, let's go. Okay, got one. He's making them run for it. We got a runner. Ooh. And we got this one. Stop you. Stop. Stop. Don't break it. Don't break it. Get distracted. Yes, you're distracted. Ah, oh, beautiful. That's all I needed. So by making sure they don't break it, you get to retrieve the prototypes. And the prototypes, or retrieval, is extremely high amounts of experience. Huge fan. Also, I like that Lara Faye is completely out of mana at this point. She's just, like, struggling to do anything. Look, Lara Faye, I, I don't have any other options either. I'm also struggling. The experimental riot suppressors are immune to stunning. The reconstructors are immune to stunning. Everything's immune to stunning. Oh, life is pain. And again, this is why the house P buffs are essential. I don't know if you see how often I'm getting hit with Mel Sassadero or some other fire move or whatever it is. It's constant. It's constant elemental damage in here. And that's one of the reasons why you absolutely uh, must have some type of elemental resistance for this. It's also the reason why on pretty much every hardcore build I recommend uh, that you put a few points into Unyielding Sentinel for the Divine Energy Resistance. The Divine Energy Resistance isn't necessary for everybody in the party to have it, but it's really good for every party to have it so people can reduce the amount of elemental damage they take by a huge amount. It's really good. Um, how do you stop those if you don't have tactics to slow them down? Well, in a spellcaster, you usually just blow them up. Like, if you're playing druid, you just hit them with tsunami. If they get knocked down, they can't do anything. You know, then you move on. Um, if you're playing as a sorcerer, uh, a little bit more complicated, because sorcerer might not have all of the right tools that you need, um, depending on the build. Okay, I wasn't able to stop that one. Maybe I can stop this one, though. It also stops the Forge Wraiths from spawning, which is nice, because Forge Wraiths, unfortunately for me, are incorporeal, so they take a while to actually kill them. I'm so nervous about my sword breaking. Say, so forks get you, and folks get you an air fryer, especially at bachelor, you bachelors. Dude, I love the air fryer. Yeah, my air fryer is the best thing ever. I love it. It's so good. And by air, my air fryer, I mean my roommate's air fryer. Fantastic product. Yeah, you don't even have to do anything. You just put it in the air fryer and just let it air fry. Problem solved. Huge fan. Great product. 52. Okay, we're almost there. Yeah, it's a fantastic product. If you don't own an air fryer, would definitely recommend. That's pretty pricey. But it's worth it. But yeah, the air fryer is not a, uh, a free piece of technology. Can you use the shrine, Lair Fay? Excuse me! <laughs> That's not what I asked you to do. Oh my god. Oh, dude, hirelings are such a good mechanic. Oh, man.
Oh, that's really funny. Anyway. I was just I was not expecting that, I'm gonna be honest. That was that was not within the realm of possibility that I had set out for what was about to happen in this quest. Oh man, I don't have freedom of movement. Oh god. Oh, that's funny. Now the monsters slowly just walk down here and attack you, so I have to just keep fighting my way up, I guess, without trining. Alright, I guess Lair Fate doesn't need her mana, so. Oh, no. The grease! Dude, I can't get up the stairs because of the grease. Oh, he burnt the grease away. Never mind. Sucker! No, more grease! Okay, more grease. No problem. We're on the stairs, fighting our way up. Lair Fae is apparently keeping herself alive somehow. I don't know how. Uh, the other day, took the shard to a red shrine, refused to come back to me, was stuck in the room till it died. Yep. Sometimes they just refuse. The hireling just says, no thanks. That was amazing. Oh, I need shield or I'm gonna die. Okay, I failed. Um, uh, good. Shield. Roll the one. Okay. I only need a three to succeed and I failed twice in a row. My god. It's a... One in a hundred? Ah, oh, well, these things happen. Okay. I really should have my hireling for this, because the final section here is a lot of forge rates, and I have no way to hit incorporeal targets, because I am a fighter. But, yeah, you know what? It is what it is. Let's get them. There's a pair of boots in here. And the pair of boots, I think, give you ghostly. They're called the Shadow Sprinters. I don't remember if they actually give you ghostly. But actually, you have no idea. Uh-oh, my island died. R.I.P. Okay. I forge wraith. Gotcha. Oh, apparently I didn't kill enough Forge Wraiths. Oh, because there's more Forge Wraiths here. It's okay if I bug report TOE to SSG for not dropping the Augment for you. Still looking forward to it for 4 hours farming with friends. You can bug report it not dropping. It doesn't mean it's not there. It's totally okay to bug report whatever you want. You're allowed to report whatever it is you need to. If an item isn't dropping, it's possible it is a bug. Maybe they need to look into it. And maybe the, dro the drop rates are broken. I couldn't tell. I don't know if I've ever pulled it, so I couldn't tell you. Like, I have no memory of pulling it or not pulling it. Almost there. We almost got him. Oh, God. Why am I playing a fighter? This is where I start to have regrets. The game was so easy. And then all of a sudden, it's still easy, but it takes a long time. Hurry. Okay, Lair Fae, I don't need her to heal. Good times today, but I love playing pal your Paladin over Fighter. Oh, absolutely. See, for me, I I like them both. The esoteric Robe, calling it Esoteric Robe. What about Resplendent Fury? Huh? What if I get Resplendent Fury? What if I get Druid Gloves? Also, you always kill Victor Dabonair because if you click on him and uh, afterwards, his body slides away. And I think that's really funny. Go, Victor, run. All right, here we go. Nothing. <laughs> uh, I gotta repair my sword. Apparently my sword is breaking. Oop. Almost there. I got, so far in Sharn, I've gotten one item. I got the um, lightning ring, this one. Flickering steel, which is very good. No complaints here. Just a good ring. Got that L like electric absorption when monsters are going to be hitting you with a lot of chain lightnings and stuff, which does happen around this level. This level range. Okay, got to fend her some crap. I don't need any of these extra swords now. Uh, it's not, I'm not going to fight anything that's going to break my weapons. I am going to fight something that's going to break my weapons. Do I have a weapon that doesn't break? It's made of steel. This is steel. This is steel. This is steel. Congratulations, Venomous Vested Sword. You get to stay. 
There is a quest with some oozes. Yeah. Selling all this garbage in my inventory. Oh, you never know when some of these things will come in handy, but I know when a lot of them won't come in handy, and that's most of the time. Get out of here, items. I haven't sold in a while. 54 items. Wee. Look at all that platinum. 54,000. If I do what she wants. Honestly, great. I'm sure that's a great clip, if that's what I think it is. Movement speed and combat mastery 5? Oh. But I like Dex. It has diversion. Ramp 32 gloves. Oh, level 60. Let's go. Our guild leveled up. I love it. Very exciting. Uh, whoops. I don't want the DDO store. More armor class, I guess. Very cool. Forgot to farm a mukbane. No, I got a mukbane. I just sold it. Just didn't want to use it. All right, here we go. Uh, this. Yeah, let's go. Okay, so out of this quest, same old song and dance, I could pull crossbow, which I don't want. Um, gloves, lightning gloves for Warforged. This is for the Arcsteel Battle Mage set. Uh, watch, not watch Captain Spite. Um, there is armor for part of the family in this quest. But this is Boromar clan territory. Nothing I want, I think. And you're smack in the middle of it. A group of would be patrons. Did you in Wrath? In the courtyard. They must not now be on the guest list. The bouncer opens the front door, allowing you to enter. Club yeah, I find it funny. So I don't ever play Inquisitive. Nightshade Shooter is a fantastic weapon. Very, very good. I just never play Inquisitive, so I never need it. Um, about this quest, you don't need to do any of the optionals. You just need to walk around and talk to everybody. So you just go talk to Piney. Hey, hey, Tiny, what's up? And that's it. Just walk through the room here. Just basically do like a circle through the entire club so you know where you're going. I'm going to quickly jump down here to kill some rats. Uh, they said they call it an exterminator. And the exterminator's name is Custom Robo Lightning Sky. Hey, bastards. Take that, rats. Not bad. What's my my effective hit points? Twenty two hundred. Mm, Twenty two hundred. And I actually leveled up repair because I'm an idiot, and I wanted the repair spell power, and also to get more health from shrining. So I should be able to repair this. I did it. I repaired the gate. Yeah, Warforged Fighter. Yeah, Fighter. Also, I really don't need to put any more points in a jump. I can stop doing that if I want. I can put Swim instead. I figured I'd get more health back when I shrined. I didn't realize how powerful uh, Second Wind was going to be. Although I admit, I almost never actually use Second Wind. Right, everything is done for Finwick, and we just go over here, and then just start fighting everything. It takes some time, but it's not too bad. Just break down all the barriers, kill everybody. More to note, I did get the 5% extra attack speed here, and the 20% shield bash chance, so I shield bash more often, and my attack speed's a little bit higher in my main hand weapon. A lot of people don't realize this about Vanguard, but Vanguard is offhand shield bash chance. So what that means is that your character makes a free shield bash. You'll notice every once in a while my character will just swing out their shield and do some extra damage. Be a stupid viewer. Um, we'll see that. It's rare, so it doesn't happen all the time, but like right there. It'll even make a telltale whooshing sound. And it's basically just free damage. Basically, every time you see like a smaller number, like 57, that has no other like fire damage next to it, that's that's what's happening. That's the the shield getting the hit. More 
Still, damage isn't that bad. Like, it's not like this character does a poor amount of damage. It just is limited um, based on the technology of its day. Uh, if I had the full Sharn set right now, oh yeah. Now we'd be cooking with friggin' bacon grease. Give me the whole Sharn set, you know, docent and all. Give me, uh... I actually can't really improve my weapon. The only way I would improve my weapon is if I had the Spinal Tap from Temple of Elemental Evil, and I don't know which part Spinal Tap drops out of. Spinal Tap is the best heroic leveling uh, Bastard Sword because it is a 19 to 20 times 3. Very fun. Ooh, a ring. Fire Absorb and Assassinate. I don't think I need that. Back to the start. Yeah, this quest isn't too bad. Maybe you're level 16 quest when you turn 20, there's level 20 lockout. There is a lockout. When does the plus damage end up being better than times 3 crit multiplier? Uh, I don't know. So somebody's going to need to build the quadratic equation for that one. Yeah, you can graph you can graph that information out. Just create a formula and solve for X. And it depends on what your base crit range is. I there's too many factors that go into it, so what's your deadly, what's your seeker, what's your base strength at, what's your base plus on the weapon? Uh do you have enchant weapons? Do you have uh, other uh, uh, things that give you bonus to hit and damage like from your tree? Like do you have all this Kensai hit and damage stuff like um, a lot of those will impact what's better between upgrading the weapon and versus just using the rock critical multiplier on a stick. Uh, spinal tap usually to 20 or 26 until you get epic spinal tap. And you replace epic spinal tap with the... Any of the raid bastard swords in the game are pretty good. So you can get um, the blade of constellations, not bad. Uh, and then there's also the frost one from Dry the Demigod, that is the Fate Twisted Sword as well. I probably wouldn't use the new one with the Augment slots, but you could. Yeah, but the Raid one gets the Freeze effect. And the Freeze effect is good. Royalty's Frigid Response goes off all the time. If you want to try a very fun build, what you do is you get Royalty's Frigid Response in one hand, Legendary Freeze in the other hand, and um, Crown of Snow, and then play a Warlock. It's really fun. Oh, Nightmare, Fallen Moon. Uh, you could run Caught in the Web. I don't recommend doing that, but you could. You're allowed. Okay, so here's a pro tip against Medusas. This is gonna sound really obvious. Some of you are watching, you're not gonna know this. Don't look at the Medusa. That's it. You just don't look at the Medusa. People don't know how to stop themselves from getting turned to stone. Don't look at the Medusa. That's it. Now you know. So now, every time a Medusa comes to fight you, comes to town, just don't look at it. When it starts to do that scream, you can hear it because it's like the snakes will be rattling like a rattlesnake. And then you just turn away. Every time I fight a Medusa, I look away and they go, You can block it by doing that? Like, yeah, you just you just look away. You can also block, which will prevent you from turning to stone. You take the, some of the damage, though. I got nothing. Might be from Air Temple? Probably. The problem with Air Temple is it's the absolute worst one to farm. You have to do all the side stuff. Now, before I go do the final quest here, I am going to quickly just refresh my ship buffs before I do just business. Because just business is very long, and I don't want to do it without ship buffs. Or, and uh, house speed buffs. Yo, what's up, Cerebria? How you doing? What's going on? Hey, Ryu.
Only ever done. So self-sustained acid wave warlock was too good compared to doing melee with the aura. I mean, they're all good. Warlock is very, very good. I love warlock. What is an item you want to farm from Just Business? Is there a docent in Just Business? I don't think so. Give me a sec. I know, I just don't want any of these items. Nice to make your fingers twist hollow. The Iron Heart Docent. That's the item that I want. There's a... There's six items that drop out of this quest. Oh my god, there's six items that drop out here? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six items. I want the Iron Heart Docent. I don't want the Topaz. Um, it would give me blurry, but also kind of sucks, so... Well, it would be okay. The Intimidate Helmet? No, thanks. The aggro intimidate helmet. I think it's much worse than my um, defensive resistance helmet. All right. So summon your hireling because you might need it. You never know. And then dump yourself on here. Perfect. Silver roll. You got it. It's that time. It's time for the silver roll. Second roll of the day. Got 94 on the gold roll. Could turn into a 94 on the silver roll. Don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to find out right now, right after these messages. Bazinga. 19. God damn it. Give me 100. It's been a while since I rolled 100, actually. I mean, obviously, it's been a while since I rolled 100, because you don't, you don't roll 100 all the time. But, you know, it is what it is. I admit that Subtlety has allowed the Orum to do as they please with the Five Nations for many years. But what I have to offer your organization... Devil sheltering and natural armor? Well, it's insightful physical sheltering. What cannot be I do have quality physical sheltering. You're exposed, Mr. Vaughn. Not for long, my friend. Allow me to demonstrate. Isabeth, please come in. Now, Isabeth, I know you invited us. Welcome. Oh, yeah, good idea. Guel. Um. Don't cry. Say, oh. Don't cry. Guel. Um. That's better. I know what that means. Might I'm type it in. This is just business, Isabeth. Just business. Will Spring get his docent? No, yeah, probably not. I won't get the docent. But you can put the prediction in, but I'm probably not going to get the docent. Quest it is what it is. It's not that I don't want to get it. I do want it, but probability. It's a 1 in 3 and a 1 in 6. So it's a 1 in 18 chance. It could happen, but 1 in 18 is uh, not the highest amount. Take Isabeth outside. We will adjourn to the yacht. It's time for the next act to begin. Mont's henchman releases a strange whooping bark. Darkness around you are That's best enough to know. Yep. True. An ambush. Damn us for fools. It's gonna take me a while to actually get all the stuff out of it. The old man produces a bow oh no! They're attacking the old man. I gotta protect Casper. Shit! Don't know if you actually have to protect Casper. I have no clue. I will actually be using the um, what do you call the source sleds for this. You don't have to. You can walk it. But I am going to be using the source lens. The hey faith is real. Yeah, the, every, you should have people should have faith that I'm not going to get what I want. That's how it is. But they're surely not the last. Confirm just business your favorite quest, despite the haters. True. Just right now, just be like, you know what, guys, we're probably gonna get enough XP to hit level cap uh, pretty handily. But you know what? Let's just farm out just business. Let's just do that. Let's just do just business. This is way easier. By Lala. I'm also passively reading the new Path of Exile patch notes that they were talking about. So they keep talking about the stuff for defeating the Herald of the Scourge. Bro, I like, have not beat the Herald of the Scourge. I do every Sanctum, and it takes a long time to get through the Sanctums. You only get to actually do the Sanctum once in every, I think, 35 maps. And then you just get to the end and lose. Yeah, 
You're almost there. Okay. All the gnolls spread out. Come to me, gnolls. Come to me, gnolls. Stop running, running away. Stop running away. End of the roguelike experience. Well, I, I, I'm sure it is. It just I find it kind of interesting that like. I, I'm curious as to what percentage of people have actually beaten a Sanctum, even one time, not including the final boss, since they've spent... Apparently there's 41 new currency items they're adding to beating the boss. It's, are there that many people that are actually beating it? As far as I know, I'm the only person I know to have beaten the Sanctum. Not saying it's impossible, but like a lot of other people played melee builds or other builds. Yeah, but I'm talking about 40 rooms. <laughs> or 32 rooms, doing all of the rooms. I told you the direct approach wasn't gonna work. I'm gonna go beat the hook on my twin. I just feel like it's a waste of development time. Like, they should figure out why people aren't beating the Sanctum and work on that, I guess. But what do I know? Like, I would assume that you wouldn't want to feel like you're wasting your developers' time by having them work on a task that people can't experience. It just seems confusing to me. Not like they should make it so easy that everybody can do it, but like there are clearly glaring flaws in the execution. I haven't finished reading the patch notes, but that's kind of where I got to, where they're like, we're adding all these things to beating the Sanctum. And it's like, yeah, you should reward people, but I don't know. I wonder what player retention is like during Sanctum. Because last league, people were really mad about the player retention. It was like the popular subreddit every day where people posting, this is the worst retention ever. This is the worst retention ever. Yeah. Am I crazy or wasn't there a giant map of giant hold that showed how to get to places, not just labeling where they are? Uh, probably. It's. Pro I would be surprised if it was on the wiki. Okay, pro tip. How do you do this section? There's tons of bats. The answer is you go in the shop. In the shop. What you do? Some kind of metal glints on their bodies as they flit about, blocking the path. That's it. Now the bats have to follow you into the shop. Are you playing solo or are you playing with a group? It doesn't matter. Just go into the shop when you do this. It's the best way to kill all the bomb bats. I highly recommend the in the shop method. It's what we do for our tens now. You just tear, pull all the bats into the shop. If you don't, then what's going to happen is you have to chase all the bats around outside, and it's really annoying. But if you just go in the shop. All the bats come in the shop, and you kill them. Took them on down. One last one. The kind of mechanic. Build like Katava touch thing, put other touch things. That wasn't the league mechanic. That was just the base game itself. And there's two bats that are missing. Come to me, bats. Also, for whatever reason, the bats have the health of a full monster. Oh my god, they're just flying up and down. No. Stop. Die, please. Woo. Anyway. Boons and afflictions will provide increased reduction to the effect of your relics. Now specify that they don't affect unique relics. Don't have one. Characters that are up close to their target now take even less damage to the resolve. Cool. You take. Guess what, you guys? You take 1% less resolve damage. So if you're next to a target, instead of taking 20 resolve damage, you still take 20 resolve damage because 1% doesn't divide out like that. But it's 1% less damage. It's kind of cool. So you're still gonna die in the same room, but you know you'll you might get one point of resolve taken off of it. It's kind of cool. Uh, Sanctum quests are no longer hidden with the enable quest tracking. We've also made improvements to those quests to reduce the chance they're missed when entering the relevant to areas. Yeah, apparently a lot of people missed the Sanctum quests. I actually found all of them. I was very lucky. I was like reading the screen and was I found uh, the Sanctum lady everywhere. I got the packs and the other thing. Party members, party members. Resolve bar now flashes when you heal or damage resolve. Add a display to show which affliction was removed when you cleanse an affliction. That's great. So we're having to look through the list. Good, good job, guys, I guess. So uh, what else is here? Blah, 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 blah. You no longer gain a new multi-stage boon or affliction, such as Little Thing Melody, if you already have a later stage. Okay. I 
made it so that some of the afflictions are even worse. Uh, cool. All right, so they made they made Sanctum harder and they added some more rewards. I mean, I guess that's what they wanted to do. I don't know. Oh, that's really funny. Maybe they maybe too many people are beating the Sanctum. Maybe they thought that like literally nobody was going to beat it. And that was like the entire goal. And they wanted not a single player to actually make it through. And the fact that people are beating it is like not the design concept. And so they're making the Sanctum harder for that purpose. I don't know. I find it interesting. Path of Exile is a cool game because they actually do design the game to just make it harder. They're the only game company in recent memory that I can think of that has just decided to make the game harder instead of easier. Why do people prefer scrolls to potions or wands? Um, you use scrolls for a lot of reasons. So, like, for example... Um... Scrolls are good for things that don't come in potion or wand format. Also, there's traps on the staircase. Yeah, Arch Nemesis was a while ago. I bet I quit as soon as you got 100. You get 100? Shit, dude, I didn't get to 100. I stalled at like tier 11 maps, then I quit. I did all my tier 10s and I did all my tier 11s, you know, corrupting them all all over 100% quantity. And then I ran out of tier 11s and I ran out of tier 10s and I had no red maps anymore. And I was like, well, I'm done. Don't need to play. Lake of Calandra and Sentinel. Uh, Lake of Calandra was garbage and everybody hated it. Um, and Sentinel League, apparently everybody loved it, but I actually really disliked Sentinel. Arch Nemesis was the best league because you could ignore the Arch Nemesis mechanic and just play around with the Atlas Passive Tree, which was awesome. I thought the concept behind Sentinel was kind of cool. I just didn't play it enough to really get into it. I quit the league just out of um, not enough time to play Path of Exile. Haste Potion. Die, Scrappy. You made a save. Yeah, also they have different cooldowns, you know. But usually if somebody is using a scroll, it's because they're using a scroll of like, you know, um, eel, as an example. Oh yeah, Delirium is pretty cool. Is he not trying? Lara Faye, what are you doing? Stop spacing out. Bro, what? Okay, passive. Please use the shrine. Please use the shrine. Oh my goodness. Hirelings. Usually I'm pretty okay with hirelings, but for some reason they're just like not doing a good job today. Come on, Lara Faye. I mean, to be fair, I'm throwing into a lot of situations. She's level 15 in this level, you know, 17 adjusted quest. So it is a little bit difficult. Maybe she's just like nervous or rattled. And realize no hireling. Hmm. Well, fortunately, you can find your way there pretty quick because now you know. Erfade does interest. Doesn't rest. That's her name. Don't wear it out. Get out of here, Mage Fire Cannon. I'm melee. Got him. Get out of here, Dask Archer. I'm melee. Got him. No Archer. Melee. Got him. There we go. Fortunately, getting surrounded here is not that bad because it means I can fight this. What would Dece Battle Lord Cannon? A Dece Battle Cannon. With, uh, half damage taken. 4,000 hit points and 100,000 fortification. Oh, yeah. oh, Atlas Blight Passes that provided your maps with Blight Encounters a chance to obtain additional Blight Encounter have irrecyclable... 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 
irreconcilable issues. Wow, that's not that hard to read. I just, my brain melted for a second. Uh, that resulted in areas with two blight encounters failing to generate reliably, so you replace these stats. Okay. The pile of small passes are 5% chance on completing your maps to get a free use of the blight map crafting option. Okay. And the passive is blight map crafting option is always available in 50% reduced cost of the blight map crafting option. Oh, so you can just do blight on every map if you want. That's kind of cool. Uh, and they also apparently buffed up the value of every oil on blighted maps. I was using amber oils, which reduces the cost of building and upgrading towers. So that's an extra 15% off of that. Reduce monster movement speed by 12%. Towers deal 25% more damage. Verdant oil. Light monsters spawn 30% faster and counter duration of 50, cent, 50 seconds shorter. Damn, that's some cool blight changes. Oh, good. What, this quest? Yeah, this... I hate this quest. There's a reason why I'm, like, not really paying attention, not being very helpful. It's... or, like, describing what I'm doing. It's because it's a big slog. This is the worst quest in Sharn. And it's really funny that this quest is the worst quest in Sharn. Um, but this is also the Sharn... the box... or the quest that's on the box. Like, it's such a train wreck. Um... I would have thought that this quest would have gotten the most attention out of every quest in Sharn because, like I said, it's literally on the cover. So if you look at the cover art for the Sharn expansion, you've got Jeet, Talbron, and Salimus fighting against the guild, uh, the Fallen, here, who we're clearly fighting against. Um, and yet this quest is easily the worst one. Um, like, it's not even a contest. Did Larifei just not heal herself? Oh, because she was on passive. Well, that's how that happens, I guess. I forgot she was on passive because she wouldn't shrine. Yeah. Expedition, Delve, Delirium, Legion, Incursion, and Harbinger. There you go. I like Legion a lot. Legion's good. I'm currently running Metamorph and Blight. I usually do Delve, but Totems is very bad with Delve. Missed on three of my attacks. Get out of here, Urk. You jerk. Never have the DPS. Yeah, it depends on the build that you're playing. I said, usually I would do some of the more, like, aggressive map modifiers. So, like, like Legion. I was originally going to start doing Legion. And, uh... Reach. But I realized I can't do Legion and Breach because Legion and Breach very specifically require you to um, be able to like fully clear maps instantaneously. All right now I don't know where Urk is, so I'm just gonna go up here and start mailing stuff. It'll show up eventually. Fish in a barrel, except he can't shoot me because he's too far away. I don't know where. There he is. Hey, what's up, Urk? That little circle around you is basically him firing his, like, death shot. Um, and it can be very difficult to manage if you're not prepared for it. So, just keep that in mind. It can be quite dangerous if he gets it off from stealth. It's one of the reasons why, uh, when you're doing this on epics, you kind of want to make sure every character that you're running on Hardcore League has deflect arrows to prevent you from being vulnerable to that attack. Oh yeah, and the fact that you have to do every quest in order in Sharn is also horrible, and I hate the fact that they haven't changed it. That's acceptable, and the shrine placement. Shrine placement is the worst. Can you try a solo-only Reaper-only build? Uh, yeah, that's most of the times when I play on the regular servers. You're not supposed to play Reaper mode solo on a first life character, and if you do, you're just going to find yourself frustrated a lot. I can do it, but I'm not going to do it on Hardcore, because it's a waste of time. The thing about doing it on Hardcore League is if you you literally just get hit by one Plague Reaper one time, and it's instant death, because you can't heal, and you're slowed, so you can't get away. So all of a sudden, any other monster coming after you just kills you, and you're done. 
the ro solo only reaper only build like i can do it for fun but there's a good chance it's going to fail because like i said there's so much rng involved one single bad attack and just game over and you gotta quit you gotta start over and do something else and there's no way to stop that it's impossible to prevent it's the reason why uh a lot of people who die they will reincarnate on hardcore league and then they die and then they have to start over because there's so much rng in low level reapers you don't have abilities to deal with anything right if you're level four or five or six you don't have stuns you don't have crowd control you're missing like most of the really good abilities to protect yourself um and that's one of the reasons why i don't like doing the level reaper on hardcore league just because on the normal servers it's not a big deal because you you know if you die you just have one person bring you to the shrine and everyone's just kind of working together but on the hardcore servers the risk involved is just ginormous uh I don't think Ultimatum is ever going to return. They might put Ultimatum as a map, I think, is what they said they're thinking of doing. So the Ultimatum will just be like a map, the, the Crucible. And Scourge. I don't remember Scourge League. <laughs> and nothing. It's funny, though, because Scourge League directly ties into the story of this league. The story is actually very interesting. I realized two pieces. One, one of the relics is actually in Heist. So when you're doing a Heist, um... Uh, when you're sorry, when you're doing heist, you uh, get. Oh, sorry, my head is killing me. Uh, you can pull these different relics out, and one of them is actually one of the relics from the new league. I don't know if it's a new relic or an old relic, but it references um, one of the demon lords. Yeah, and then the scourge stuff. Yeah, wait. I guess the I guess the new beyond monsters are just scourge monsters, right? I just can't remember Scourge League. I remember playing it, but I don't actually remember what the mechanics were. I know there were mechanics, I just couldn't tell you. I'm sure there's rules to Scourge League. You enter an alternate raid class or rule by demons? Uh, yeah, I can't remember any of that. I'm going to do a couple quests on the cogs um, because I need a little bit more XP. Yeah, I got nothing. It's, I completely blame. I played it. I know I played it, but I have no idea. You eat Scourge. Oh, I remember now. You had yeah, you had the blood gauge, right? And then when you killed monsters, you could like flip it active, and it would summon all the stuff next to you, and then you would turn it off. So you could turn it on whenever you wherever you were. I remember this. I didn't get that far in it. Right. And that's where the Scourge Demons come from. So that's, of course, Katash, Gore, and Baydat. And that's why the the boss monster of this league is Baydat. Forgot about that one. Forgot to summon my character. Hmm. Right, it is Scourge League. I forgot about Scourge League. I don't think I played that much of Scourge League. I think I quit pretty early in Scourge League. Again, as I said, I don't really play every Path of Exile League because one, you gotta play other games, and two, as I said, I find some of the like more complicated mechanics as to how you create individual items to be like too much for my small brain. I'm not smart enough to play Path of Exile at the highest level. I don't really understand a lot of the mechanics. Which is funny, because, like, I know a lot of different things. I know tons of things. But yeah, I can't do that. Can you cast destruction on those zombies? Uh, these zombies are actually counted as undead by the game, even though they're plants. But they're not actually un uh, undead. They're plants. So I don't think you can destruct them. But you can't damage them with negative. They actually heal from negative energy. Really funny. Expedition, though. Should have gotten to read all the books. I mean, you still can, though. Reading all the books in Expedition is really easy now, because... Expedition is one of the things you can specialize in on the Atlas. You can just have an expedition on, like, every single map. Uh, 
muffled moans draw your attention to the south. Perhaps this is the source of the zombie invasion. Yeah, these zombies, for whatever reason, Red Musk infected. It's only in this quest as well. They're glitched. Um, they, for whatever reason, are counted as undead. Um, also, they cast Splinter Bolt, which does physical damage. You have to be very careful about that. It can do quite a lot of damage if you're not prepared for it. Yeah, these things need to be fixed, because as a result, they're basically almost impossible to kill if you, you can cast Destruction, as you saw. But they're almost impossible to kill if you are, in fact, a... Uh, a pale master because they're in pretty much entirely immune to uh, negative and negative damage and you can't strip it from them either which is annoying they still get delayed blast fireball like everybody else but it's annoying yeah my character is actually really really good at expedition um i just didn't specialize in it i just do them when they show up in maps for the Kelga! I actually have a lot of, um, a lot of the logbooks banked away. I just don't do them. Next league, if you remember, hold me to it. Sure, I will. Before next league, I'll message you. And I'll be like, hey, you're doing next league? And then you'll be like, oh yeah, right. It's good. It's good stuff. I'm, I need to learn how to craft like Ipsum. That's what I need to do. Yeah, I might just like liquidate all of my currency into fusings and see if I can get a six link. Mm, should be good. It'll help out with my progress. I'm getting exalts? Exalted herbs don't have any value anymore. They changed all, how all the crafting works, so exalted herbs aren't worth anything. It's um, uh, divine orbs that are valuable. Friend, tips some friends how to craft. Maybe I just need to spend more time re watching more YouTube videos to really understand the process. You need to learn a new system? No, you just need to let your brain not get as much of an adrenaline rush when you drop an Exalted Orb and realize that an Exalted Orb is worth 10 chaos. Whereas a Divine Orb, I think, is 200? Divine Orb. Let me look that up, actually. to reveal what appears to be all right so you can break some of these things back here i'm kind of worried about the final boss but i think it'll be okay i was just gonna beat him up and uh, hopefully that'll be all right i can uh heal myself out of the um inst or the mind blast which is all right i made my save too which is cool and he's dead Stambling Bounds, also annoying, but I can stun and blow them. Apparently I can't stun and blow them. Okay. That one's dead. Basically, we're almost dead. And that one's dead. Nice. What changed for that? Oh, they... Saints of... Or not Saints of Games. Grindier Games just made it so all the crafts that used to use Exalted Orbs use uh, Divine Orbs instead. Moon Willow. Very cool. So everything on the crafting bench changed. Yeah, Divine Orb is 234 chaos. Wow. This Exalted Orb is... Uh, 19. Yeah, mirror is still 41,000 or 42,000 chaos. I know. Exciting. Who knows? Maybe just get one. Get a mirror drop. The Fracturing Orb, 1.1 thousand. So many orbs.
yeah, following all of that, it's interesting that there's almost like this real world economy that goes on in the game. Kind of cool. 40, four, no, that, that's 4,200. I said 42,000. You need to, you dropped a zero. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta add a whole zero onto that one. Yeah, I know. So this quest only has one dangerous monster at the end, and it's the Forge Wraith. And by dangerous monster, I mean tedious monster, because I can't hit it. I just gotta make sure I get to the end with Laura, uh, Lara Faye still having some mana left in her. I might actually just tell her to pump the brakes on actually attacking stuff, so I can make sure she has mana before the final fight. Hours of playtime in normal Labyrinth. Hey man, you can pull a mirror anywhere. It just, I'm so curious as to the number of mirrors that either have been pulled by people who are, have never made it to maps, and also the number of mirrors that have been pulled and used on garbage. Where somebody pulls it, and then they don't know what it's for, so they just like use it. What would you build if cost was not a problem? For like a character? I don't know. Cost is always a problem. That's what makes it interesting. I'm gonna play the market and plan around it. I play totems because totems usually aren't very popular. It just so happens that this league totems are incredibly popular. Or mirrors vendored. Imagine if it was like in Diablo 2 where for vendoring mirrors you can summon a special boss. You summon Calandra and it appears in everybody's game or something. The same concept. Calandra now walks the earth for selling a mirror to a vendor. It's like selling enough stone to Jordans. Get 20 million armor. Yeah, then you can just be invincible and take no damage from anything. Oh no, Squirt was slain by an ancient magma brute. Rip. I'm doing this because of the shield upgrade in this quest. And so hopefully I can get it. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get the item out of here, but we'll see. Yeah, Oni Groshi's not that bad. Because it's not even that bad to actually just farm it out. The trick to farming out Oni Groshi is pick an entire season of a TV show to watch, throw it up on another screen, like a TV or another monitor or whatever, or on your phone, and then uh, just start farming it out and watch an entire season of TV. Really the, the pro gamer move right there. I did. It's not that bad. I farmed out three Oni Garoshis in three different leagues. Yep, nothing. Rats. Oh no, King Feng was slain at level 12 due to a trap. F. That sucks, dude. Wait a week and buy it for two divines? I don't know. To be in a league, it only, like, it's gonna take you between four and ten hours. So, not too bad. Last time I farmed out was an Oni Groshi was when I was working for the government and I had nothing to do during some meetings. There was, like, a day where we had an all day of meetings and it was. Like, we're supposed to be paying attention to new policy or some nonsense. The problem was, one, it didn't apply to me because of the position that I was in. And two, half the meeting was in French. Um, and I don't speak French at all, so I couldn't even pay attention to all of it. Um, so I just farmed a Noni Garoshi during the, the day. Uh... French worst language. I'm not gonna say French is the worst language. I just am not fluent. Like I can pick up bits and pieces, but when you have somebody going over like a comprehensive business plan in French for like an hour, dude, I just tune it all out. I don't know what to say. I, I just can't hear all of that. It's just too much, too much nonsense. Again, it's a language. People speak it. It makes perfect sense to those that understand it. I just don't. It would make word good. Uh, there's, there's been a whole bunch of ward builds throughout time.
So you, I think the answer to that question is yes. After making your way into the ancient goblin ruins, you find yourself in a dark chamber. Creatures loyal to that ancient goblin ruins. Perhaps if you gave them a gentle crash. Go get this guy out of the way. Get this guy out of the way. Die, Avernus Battle Rager. Return to the grave. Not return to the grave, but go to the grave, please. Thank you. And the reason why I'm doing Sharn Quest, by the way, is just because Sharn drops a lot of good gear, and if I pull anything out of it, I'll be pretty excited. Like I said, I already pulled. Uh, this ring, the Ring of Flickering Steel. And that was pretty rad, so I'm happy about that pull. I did pull the Moon Willow, which I don't need, because it's a short sword, and that kind of blows. But I believe there is a Bastard Sword. I think there's a Bastard Sword. There's definitely a Kopesh and a Sickle. Is there a Bastard Sword in Sharn? I think there is. Is there a Bastard Sword in Roll Call, or is that the Kopesh? The language of love. I mean, maybe. I said, I'm not much of a French speaker, so I couldn't tell you if it is the language of love or not. Oh, I don't know where. I just needed to sneeze. Kopesh's roll call. Okay. So then they... Is there a bastard sword in here? More grunts are gathered inside this maybe there isn't. There probably isn't. I'm just imagining things. Okay. I have an active imagination. I go, it just takes me so long to kill stuff that Larafe can keep up by just casting destruction every once in a while. Must kill every monster in every quest. Oh, because that's how they're designed. Blood Retribution. That's not a bad idea. Because actually getting the upgrade materials to make it to level 20 is also not that bad. How good is Templar's Retribution at level 20 for this game? Mm, Templar's Retribution DDO. You hear a familiar voice coming from the platform above you. Epic Templar's Retribution, Holy Burst, Good Blast, Chorus Gating, Godly Wrath, Cold Iron. Is that better than a Keep on the Borderlands Bastard Sword? I think the answer is no. Because the Keep on the Borderlands Bastard Sword is so much better. Uh, well, it's Adamantine anyway. I'm ignoring the demons and I'm just going after the artifact. Because you don't actually have to kill them. You just have to kill the portal. Once the portal's dead, it's over. It's over! Gotcha. 9,000 XP. I would have thought it was cool. I just don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do that with one ages ago, but we're like, why? Yeah, there are, there's a good build. Ah, oh, that's what I wanted. The shuriken. The ornate artifact. That is what I needed. I didn't realize I needed the shuriken, but there it is, right there. Oh, yeah. Shuriken. Holy Burst and Good Blast is kind of interesting. And light damage. It does 12 d6s of holy damage. And as well as 14 d6s on critical hits, which is not that bad. And then Godly Wrath. Occasionally, it deals a lasting effect that deals two to two to eight light damage every two seconds for six seconds. Oh, godly wrath. Okay, are there any other 15s I want to do before I level up? I don't think so. I think I'm pretty good. So I think that's all we are going to do today for 15. It's time to move up. Gorim, hello. Or Gorin, Gorin Toth. Give me your level up, please. And that gives me two feats. Two feats are wonderful. I'm going to use those two feats right here to get two things. Oh, sweet. You need... Um... Oh, 
Okay, I'm supposed to take greater weapons back and tactical mastery. Greater weapon spec, this is plus two to damage, which is good. And tactical mastery is plus six to all tactical DCs. Super good. All right, and I get four extra points. So, um, these people want invites to the guild. Here you go. Come on in. Get in the guild. Plus 20 melee range power. Let's go. Extra plus one to hit and damage. Pretty good. I take overbalance and then I get steadfast for the quality hit point bonus and being immune to fear and knockdown. Oh, sweet. So now my character is even more hit points. So it just like, like that's a lot of health. So when I use my action boost, I'm up to almost a thousand, which is I'm not gonna lie, kind of cool. Almost a thousand hit points, kind of cool. And then also I now have one cut, a button that when I press it, Gives me plus one critical multiplier, critical damage multi. So if I hit it, I have plus one crit multi on my weapon. So it's 54.25 dam base damage rating, which is not bad. That one cut. And I've got uh, 54 melee range power. Oh, cool. And no, yeah, 54, which then goes down to 46. Got a button? No, no. Oh, Nelly. All right. Um, I'm really close. I'm 200,000 experience points away from the level cap of 20 on solo fighter. And I kind of stopped paying attention to the video game, which is kind of bad. Should be more. I should be more attentive to what's actually happening. Uh, the caster fighters, uh, the, you know, uh, well, you know, well, um, you know, uh, you know, in the future, we'll, we'll, you know, in the future, we'll think about it. But for now, I think I'm going to avoid caster fighter for now. I think that caster fighter is something that doesn't need to be done now, but can be done later. You know what I mean? Like, I, like, I think it doesn't need to be done today, but it can be done tomorrow. Good farm out for the legendary version. The legendary version of Templar's Retribution, good. No, it still has Godly Wrath. <laughs> Funny. All right. Time to finish off Sharn, I guess. All right, this quest also has a docent that I can get. No refunds. Give me a docent. So does House of Pain. Except no refunds and House of Pain both have incredibly powerful items for this character. Um, this can drop the Umber Brim, a really powerful helmet, and a docent, making it very good. Or the necklace. Uh, that drops out of this quest, which is also very good um, for defense. So we'll see. Uh, which also reminds me, I did not summon my hireling. And the next quest has the best in slot necklace for leveling on this type of character, which you're seeing, and an amazing docent. And I don't know if my damage is actually going to be feeling any better, but the hope is that it feels a little bit better. See? I used one cut. Blurry. Hmm. Need true seeing. Need to see truly. Yeah, these, these quests are going to have a lot of monsters in them. But I'm happy I took the extra action boost in the leveling process, because usually you don't need the extra action boost, but for me, my... I mean, quests take a little bit longer than I would generally be expecting. What are you gonna do? Uh oh, get out of here, shield guardian. Yeah, generally in these quests, um, the artificers and other monsters aren't super dangerous. They get a little bit more dangerous in epics, but in heroics, it's not too bad, I would say. It's mostly just they have 18 hit, 1800 hit points, so it's a little tedious. Also, there's a crest of the wolf here. You can find out the crest is here if you just backspace through it. In this quest, you're supposed to find four different crests. And um, you usually, if you're playing in a group, not by yourself, you want to say when you find one. So you type in chat when you find a crest, just type the number one. The next person can type when they find a crest, they can type two, and that way you know how many crests your team has. So instead of like, you know, people repeating things or not knowing who, how many uh, you have as a total, you can kind of keep that, keep track of that easier. But just type it in in chat. 
I use the chat bar or the chat box as like a log all the time for stuff. When I just need to remember something quickly, just throw it in the chat box. Assuming that your party isn't too friendly with one another, so they're not just constantly chatting. And they're actually playing the game. It depends. Which is nothing wrong with just, you know, idly chatting with your teammates. But uh, if they are, if there's a lot of chatter, or if you happen to have like guild chat as well included, um, that can obviously slow it down. Oh, hey, look, and a whole army of people running up to get me. Cool. Heal for 816. Damn, dude. Fighter feels good. Good old solo fighter. Hitting a guy for 2,500 feels really good. And I don't think that's even with a double strike. I actually don't know what my double strike chance is. One of the things I like about Pure Fighter, especially when you have a lot of pass lives, if you have a lot of pass lives, this is not a concern. But if you're playing a Pure Fighter and you don't have a lot of pass lives, getting double strike can be quite difficult. This character is going to be getting a lot of double strike, however, because the capstone for Kensai gives you 15%. And I will be taking a feat at level 20, or sorry, level 32, 31, that will give me an extra 10% double strike for using a shield. So I get 30% or, yeah, 25% double strike. Just baseline from my class, which is kind of cool. I believe this is the last crest that I needed. I'm trying to figure out exactly how you're going to be getting a lot of your offensive stats. Double strike is important and it does matter quite a bit. Um, so, you know, making sure you have all of those things is key to your own success. I think my double strike is probably five, seven. I get 2% from the ship and a 5% from an item. The way that a lot of people will get double strike is from either um, the Cloak of Summer, because the Cloak of Summer at Endgame gives you double strike as well as strength and insightful strength. So it just really gets you a lot of the melee stats that you want and is really cool as like a cloak for melee characters. It fits into a lot of build sets. Um, there's also the part of the family necklace, which is pretty good for the uh, raid necklace called the family's blessing that comes from the raid um, Project Nemesis. That necklace is also great because it gives double strike as well. Um, the part of the family gloves also give insightful double strike, which is pretty good. And there's also insightful double strike on the um, bracers from Feywild. The summer bracers give insightful double strike as well. They also grant charisma because they're designed to go like a paladin adjacent sort of set. Just lemon off the tree this season. Wait, are lemons fresh right now? I don't know Arizona weather. Yeah, and then you have the Gatekeeper Trinket for uh, quality double strike as well. There's also now the new uh, goggles from Temple of Elemental Evil, which really do a good job of filling out some of the, the slots you need for your uh, extra double strike. What's deadly, quality, deadly? I think it's deadly, quality, deadly, double strike, insightful double strike, or something like that. Just really has every stat on it. So if you don't have double strike anywhere in your build, it just gets the job done. KM Stream, update hey. on Fee Dark build. I bought a cleric higher at the beginning of Fee Wild and forgot to use them for the entirety of Fee Wild. So nice. yay, Fee Dark is pretty good, I guess, a gauge. Yeah, Fee Dark Illusions just gets the job done. The nice thing about Fee Dark is even if you're not sure what you're going to be playing, as long as you have some meta magic feats, you just take like maximize and power and quicken. You, uh, you can just. Blast your way through it, but yeah, that too. Chitter's Ripozo, I guess. Yeah, my character's too tanky to really die. Hmm. I don't know if I have like great advice for at this point in the game, because I feel like in a lot of cases, many people's characters will be probably squishier than this. I mean, I could do this again on, like, a spellcaster. Just pick, like, a bard and then just slam my way through the entire video game. I feel like that'd be really easy. Solo bard challenge. Warning, this is not a challenge. It's incredibly easy. Bard is one of the best classes in DDO. Solo Stormsinger? What? That's crazy. It would be interesting to do a contrast. I mean, I think the answer is probably, like, solo rogue, but... 
God, I don't want to play Rogue Solo. A small card Only if I can play Shader Kai. Nola, uh, solo Rogue that's not Shader Kai would be such a nightmare. You'll need a key to get in. You unlock the door using the key to the... So does the AC reduction from Center affect Critical Confirmation? Yes, because Critical Confirmation is beating the armor class. The answer to that question is yes, because that you need to hit armor class to for critical confirmation. Get out of here, security construct. All right, Lara Faye, let's go. Yeah, but when you get to this point where there's so many like constructs and stuff, it gets really annoying. Yeah, Sunder's not bad. I don't use Sunder very often. I usually just use Shattering Strike because it takes fortification away from monsters and is good for when you have to fight a lot of constructs. All right. That did not give me any extra XP, so I don't know why I did that. The Radiant Come on, Twinite. 6,000 hit points. Boom. Wow, 45. Uh, 3,900. Boom. Uh, apparently I didn't get it underneath the execute point when I hit the execute, which is a mistake. And Lair Fae's almost dead. Save yourself! You're supposed to kill all the adds there. Don't do what I did and just rush the boss. I was just curious as to how fast I could kill it. Oh, apparently there's one here. All right, come on, items. Let's go, something good. Let's go, something good. Not the dagger, not the dagger, not the dagger, not the dagger. Well, I got nothing. That's good, too. I mean, you know, I got an item. I got, like, loot from the chest. I got festival coins. Oh. The life, the pain, dude, the pain. Oh, man. Who needs items? I don't need anything. It's not even a need. It's more like a want. I just want them. Um, I can see 12 gogs. Man, that's pretty good. Soul Stealing Shield. Huh. Also not very good. Alright. Uh, anyone got a two weapon fighter ranger build? Yeah. Two weapon fighter ranger is one of the most easiest, straightforward things you can make. Because you basically just put like 40 something points in the Tempest Tree, and then enough points in um Deepwood Stalker, and then you basically go like either dexterity is the standard using light weapons. Or you just go strength and use heavy weapons and use whatever weapons you want. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, you can kind of do really whatever you want. It's very, very easy. Um, you can build pretty much anything you want to do. There's no real wrong move when it comes to Ranger. You just put points in a Tempest and don't use hand wraps because hand wraps are the wrong move when you come, it comes to Ranger. Um, I'm sure I have one probably somewhere. Holy moly, 18 already? I know. I'm 18 already. I leveled so quickly. Isn't it amazing? Man. All right. So another quest that gets a lot of people get killed is uh, this quest here, um, House of Pain. I'm going to show you guys how to do House of Pain without having any um, or without having any uh, trapper. There is a method to do this without having anyone who disables traps to do it safely. The thing is, I'm not actually going to get my house debuffs because there are monsters in here called assassins. The assassins cast a spell magic constantly and are going to be causing me a lot of problems. So I am not going to be having any um, house debuffs. The downside about that is that elemental resistances are really useful in this first area of the quest. This is the most dangerous area of this entire quest is this room right up ahead. There are these things called Forge Wraith Wisps that are undead and incorporeal. You have to kill them quickly and they deal horrendously high amounts of fire damage. It's very dangerous, so we'll see how this goes. Killing bots since 2006. Correct. Kill the Forge Wraith Wisps. Everything else doesn't matter. The Forge Wraiths don't matter. These are the only dangerous monsters. There's one here. I just don't know where it is. There it is. I can see the Forge Wraith Wisp. Whew. Because the rest of the stuff is, like, kind of dangerous, but I have a, a hireling that'll take care of most of it. But it's the Forge Race Wisps that are dangerous. If you're not aware of what's going to happen to you, you're going to get killed by one, and it's going to be really sad. You're going to have a bad time. So I'd recommend just have fire resistance, fire absorption, anything you can, and go for the Wisps right away. The Forge Race are nowhere near as dangerous as the for or as the Wisps are, for a reason I don't entirely understand. Also, Motrofet, welcome back to the stream team for 22 months. Appreciate the support. Hope you're having a fantastic day. 
Okay, so House of Pain. How do you do this? Um, the, what you need to do is get the Lady in Black to spawn so you can enter the lower part of the quest. To get the Lady in Black to spawn, first you have to go into the tavern and ask around where Evan is. Once you get the information about where Evan is, you find out that he left with a lady who was wearing black. You then have to go into the lower section and basically aggro a series of assassins by walking through a construction site. Once you aggro the assassins, the lady in black will spawn somewhere in the map. There's sometimes a little bit of a delay, um, so you just got to be you know, a little careful about that. So just talk to everybody in here. You actually don't need to talk to everybody. You just got to talk to the barkeep, the drunk, um, the waitress, and the gossip. And then that will get everything. You don't need to talk to this guy. You can just walk past him. Alright. So, the construction site is over yonder. So we're going to go over to the construction site. Just kind of come over here. Down here. So this is the construction site right here. When I walk under here, it's going to spawn the Lady in Black somewhere in the map. I'm going to come over here. There's always going to be one assassin that spawns on the ground next to you. And then all the other assassins spawn up in the air. So they're going to be on top of this actual construction site. Um, by strategically putting Lara Fey in the way, they're only dispelling Lara Fey and not me, which was actually not a bad idea. The problem is they also show up in the final fight, so it's not like I can avoid getting the spell magic by just, you know, letting Lara Fey eat them here. Anyway, now i got to go find the Lady in Black. She's not there. She's not right here. Keep going. She is not here. Fight these guys. Kill this guy. Get here, gang member. Uh, she's not right here. She could be right here, but she's not. Keep going around. And you basically just make a circle at this point. All the monsters are dead. I don't have to find anything unless I go the wrong direction. You just walk in a circle looking for the lady in black. Again, sometimes she just has a delay into when she spawns. I don't know the exact control. Um, so you just got to keep running around. Eventually she'll spawn. No lady in black here. Lady in black. Right here somewhere. There she is. All the way back here. Hello. So you can talk to her. This dialogue is really funny, by the way. If you haven't had the chance to actually read through the whole thing, I would highly recommend it. This quest is very entertaining. Okay, so we go to the secret passage. Now, there are eight trap boxes here, okay? So, because there are eight traps, and you'll get destroyed if you don't break all of them, or, like, disable all of them. Eight traps is how many you have to disable. But me am fighter, fighter man can't do traps, so what do I do? It turns out the traps are controlled by this pipe. So I can break every other pipe and then break this one last. So proceed to the pipe breaking. Break all the pipes up top, break the pipes in the middle. Don't use explosions for this, because if you do that, then you'll probably end up breaking this pipe by accident. And then once I'm sure that I've broken every pipe, broken, 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 I break this pipe and jump down. Pipe and down. By doing this, there will be traps that'll spawn, but I don't actually have to worry about any of those traps hitting me. Also, because I'm on hardcore, I'm going to go left. And also, there's a breast monster on the right, um, so I don't want to deal with that. But if you want to, you can obviously go right. And that's how you get through that without dealing with any traps every single time. So you never have to worry about dealing with traps um, if you don't have a trap person. Great for farming when you're on hardcore. And you, you know, you're you like, oh man, we don't have a trap person. We can't do House of Pain. You definitely can. Um, you don't need a trap person to do House of Pain. Uh, there was a time where it might have been very helpful, but nowadays it's completely unnecessary in modern modern strategy but if you are disabling traps just remember it is eight eight traps if you are ever in a quest and there's not eight traps disabled like somebody only disabled like six of them and they start breaking pipes abort mission you're going to die just keep that in mind There's like somebody just doesn't disable all of them. I only disable a few. If you search right in the middle, you are always going to be um, getting all of them. But still. Yep. Oh, good. Larifei is attacking the rust monster through the ground. Good to know. Thanks, Larifei. I wanted to fight the rust monster. Ash. 
Okay, I hear rats. I'm actually going to talk to Ash, because by talking to Ash, I get some XP, because you say, hey, you know what's up with this? And he goes, I don't know what's up with this. And you just pull this, and you get some XP. It's not a lot of XP, but it's worth it. Better than nothing. You did it. Ash to Therash calls down the hallway. You should probably investigate. Now we go down here. Spider Man helping another fighter man? I mean, basically. Ash is a fighter man. He's some big half orc fighter. And I'm a big Warforged fighter. So we can have a big fight. At Perfect. First, Lady Thora gapes at you like a startled deer. Then she sighs with exasperation. And then you beat up Ash to Therish. Goodbye, Ash. If you want something done right, Speaking of Ash, did you hear that they're retiring Ash Ketchum from Pokemon? That's right. They're getting a new protagonist. They can't change that. That's the only protagonist I've ever known in the Pokemon series for like a hundred generations. It's scary to think that the show has been on the air for like 26 or 27 years or something like that. Yeah, so he's retiring. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next series they just made him like an old man. Like he shows up in the background somewhere and be like, Hi, I'm Ash Ketchum and I'm 300 years old. Like, Ash, weren't you, weren't you, like, 10 in the last episode? Like, yes, but now I'm the old man now. Oh, old man, Ash Ketchum, that's me. That's, that's what I imagine old man Ash Ketchum talks like. As well. Yeah, they could. Well, because Ash is a type of tree, right? They literally could make Professor Ash. Although he would be Professor Ketchum, because I guess it's his last name. But they could make, like, Professor Ash a thing if they wanted. It wouldn't really make sense with his name, but they could do it. Oh god, I can't see. I'm blind. Get out of here, spellcaster. Replacing Ash with this edgy with this edgy dog named Poochie. No, they're not they're not they're not replacing him with Poochie. No, no, no. That's that was a different character, different time. Oh my god, that's be really funny. They need to get the kids. They gotta they gotta get Poochie. Amazing. The Dusk Shamans, there's two of them here. Get out of here. One and two, they're dead. Oh, so many assassins! It's because all the monsters with displacement really screw with this. Oh, stop dispelling my magic, you monsters. Now, actually, I'm going to be leaving Sharn after this. Not completely, but I have two more quests to do. But before I do them, I want to make sure I get some extra items. Also, there are three items in this chest that I want. So, hopefully I'll get one of them. Alright, Evan, come on. Give me the items I need, buddy. Come on, Thora, give me the items I need. Please? Ah, nothing. Well, what are you going to do? Yeah, I don't need True Sing. You know, I could get True Sing eventually. Um, scrolls would help out a lot. But we'll get there. Oh no! Stonejaw claimed another gut wrencher slain by Stonejaw. Oh my god, so many people. That's like, what, the fifth person dying to Stonejaw just today? Uh Stonejaw is just an absolute beast. Literally, because it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. As it turns out, Tyrannosaurus Rex is very dangerous. Also, I forgot. I have all the guild buffs up here. You might not know this. You can turn it off. If you go into search op options, you type in search guild. You can hide guild buffs. So now it's just this one icon for guild buffs. So you can keep tabs on it. And hide guild renowned chat feedback so it doesn't spam your chat log every time you get guild renowned. Pretty neat, huh? I'm trying to drop Stonejaw. Well, heroic stone jaw, especially. 
Isn't that neat? Now look how clean, how much cleaner this is. All my buffs are so easily uh, readable. Now I need Mikhail the Pious because Mikhail is going to be helpful. He's going to help me do something incredible and I need him. What's on a misadventure? No, misadventure is by far the number one. I think a lot of people just forget where traps are or they get overconfident. I think that is honestly what happens to most people is they just get overconfident. Overconfidence is insidious. And it breaks you down. Alright, so I'm going to grab House P-Buffs again because there's no more Dispel Magic happening. And that's just a good amount of extra defensive stats. And now we head to the Drunken Dragon. So as you can see here, you know, still got the resistances on there. Apparently I... Oh, I guess I don't need Electric or uh, Acid anymore because I just already have those from items. Which is kind of cool, having built-in resistances. But I don't need uh, Mikhail the Pious yet. The next quest, a Blown Deadline, Mikhail is not important for. Uh, physical smoldering short sword. Holy bastard sword. I'm going to take the impressive trophy. I don't need any of these items. All right, blown deadline. Blown deadline is just a quest with a bunch of monsters. There is a couple tricks that I will show you in here. One is to avoid a lot of the traps on the trap floor, which um, can be kind of spooky, and I don't want anyone to get uh, killed by that. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some solid assistance here. You arrive at the world-renowned Korna. Temple dedicated to the god of wealth, located in the pulsing. Yeah, hopefully Charm. that'll be good. The main temple has just closed its doors for the evening. You wonder why Kol Koran's high priest wants to meet. We come in here. Apparently, I didn't talk to the guard, or I didn't talk to Kaflin Riek. God damn, Kaflin Riek! I always, I thought he was going to be the mysterious stranger because Kaflin Riek is the high priest of Kol Koran, and he's got the same. I mean, he's obviously the same build, but just stick the the mysterious stranger outfit on him make him a little bit taller and boom he's like a spooky guy he's like in you know head of a church head of the concord or the 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 plat he's in the platinum concord like just makes sense to me you arrive at your destination after a long and he's a member of the shadow council so it's like you know it would make sense that he would be the mysterious stranger it wasn't it was Fekna the whole time but i still liked my idea i thought kathleen reyek was the inspired pick Anyway, I'm just going to be meleeing these guys down. The 2,860 health melees. <laughs> Why does I have so many hit points? Anyway. Yeah, Misadventure comes swinging on the daily. Absolutely. Misadventure's out there just beating people down. Again, that's why a lot of people die to traps. Hopefully, if anybody's been watching this, that I've been able to uh, assist with a couple ways to get around certain traps, especially while solo. I know that can be a big struggle for many, is being able just to avoid traps generally, because, um, you know, they're traps. They're not supposed to know when they're coming for you. Um, so a lot of people get kind of bamboozled by them. So if I can help even one person, you know, kind of escape a trap, I'm pretty happy with my results overall. Here's Stranger in Sharn is Vecna. He doesn't look the same. There is no Mysterious Stranger in Sharn. When Vaunt has the conversation with that person, that is Kathleen Riek. Right, that's who he has the conversation with. Um, but I thought the Mysterious Stranger from the Feywild was also Kathleen Riek. But it's just the same voice actor. Trap smiths are annoying because they drop sticky traps, so I'm just trying to kill them as quickly as I can. There it is. There's the sticky trap. I see it in the distance. I'm going to try to avoid the sticky trap, but they drop it like right under their feet, which is exactly the reason why you can see there's two of them now, apparently. I'm going around them, so I don't have to worry about that. But also... Another reason is why I don't actually kill all the ranged monsters, because they're just annoying to deal with, because you have to run through all the sticky traps. Again, trap smiths. Everything is dead. Nice. Everybody 
you're dead. Good. And again, just killing these ranged characters. The ranged ca attackers don't really matter too much. I'm just mailing them down. They don't do a lot of damage. They do force damage, but I have so many hit points, it's not a big deal. Obviously, if your hit points are half of what mine are, because you're playing like a spellcaster, you have to be a little bit more mindful. But also, if you're a spellcaster, you should be able to like dumpster everything in this entire room in one hit. But at that point, it's not really that big of a deal. Like I said, if people want it, I'll ask. Um, and I might do like a solo spellcaster as well, if people want to see that, um, like what the difference would be like. I will not do a ranged character, I refuse. Ranged, we've talked about this before, is not fun. Ranged is not fun to play, and so I'm not gonna do it. I don't need to waste my time. Some people might be curious, you can use the tips that you learned here about doing that, but yeah, playing solo as a ranged is just the worst idea in the galaxy. There's probably nothing less fun in DDO than playing a ranged character. Um, and trying to do it solo, so you have to kite the entire time, so every room is just really running as fast backwards as you can through hallways. Ugh, what a waste of time. As you open the first valve, the pipes in the room begin to rupture, and steam hisses. There we go. Another pipe breaks, and the machinery itself. So there's like acid that can get you. The acid knocks you down, so be careful. Also, there's traps. Always stand on these like little railings because they don't break when you walk over them. Not like everything else, which does break when you walk over them. Uh, hello. There's been a lot of lag here today on this uh, this year Hardcore League. Anyway. Anything with six ranger can just two up and fighting through? 100%. But yeah, that's what I'm, I'm just saying, like, if somebody wants me to make a ranged character, I'm absolutely not going to do it. We've had this discussion, but I don't find ranged fun at all in DDO. Ranged as in ranged attackers, not like spellcasters. Spellcasters are different. Range attackers, in from my definition of ranged, are throwers, crossbow users, inquisitives, horizon walkers, bow users. Anything that uses a weapon to attack at range is a ranged character. Casters are casters. Because they play entirely differently. Casters, very fun. Ranged, completely worthless. They're, they do great damage in endgame. Oh, the sticky trap. No, I'm slow for 20 seconds. I almost made it through. God damn it. Well. Okay, so how do you get through this? There's tons of dangerous traps. Oh no, Homelander was slain at level 19. RIP, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, level 19. That's so close. That means I was somebody working on like their favor. Oh, geez. Anyway, pull the levers here. Stuff's going to start exploding. Pull more levers and more things start exploding. You see acid are going to start billowing out of here. Climb on top of this. And then jump over the acid. No problem. Now pull this lever. Pull this lever. And then pull this valve. And what you're going to notice is you're now boxed in. You have lightning floor behind you. You have acid and fire. How do I get out of here safely? There is a way. Turn around. Climb on top of this. As it turns out you can actually climb right on top of this little ledge here. And then you can climb on top of this little ledge here. And then you can climb on top of this. Perfectly and seamlessly getting you out of here with no damage taken. How you do that? Get out of here. Curious for its lack of lag. Now that there aren't dogs, the lag returns. It's interesting. Like, Hardcore League has been pretty good with, with the lag um, for the past little while. These grapes you do with Caster, which Caster do you think would be the most challenging? Um, most challenging? Probably Caster Artificer. Maybe? Would Caster Artificer be challenging? Bard is easy. Sorcerer's easy. Druid's easy. Player can favorite soul are very easy. So, probably Artificer or Wizard. One of those two. Alchemist would also be very easy. Okay, so this quest can be dangerous because there are monsters that are going to spawn that are very, very deadly. Also, I need to protect myself from magic missiles or else I am going to die here. 
I've already used two of my uh, heals. This is actually probably the hardest quest I've come on come into because the monster is quite dangerous here. This boss. But I'm just potioning up, keeping my health alive. So what I want to do is I want to pull Lil Babette up here. Because there's going to be a bunch of monsters that spawn here, and the monsters that spawn here are very dangerous. Or I think I want to pull Lil Babette up here. I've seen it go all the way up there. I don't know how. Anyway, I want to run up here and kill these right away. These things cast constant lightning spells that are quite dangerous, and I just want to get them out of the way as fast as I can. Then again, go for the ads. Ignore the boss, go for the ads always. If there's monsters killing you, you want to take care of those monsters right away. Okay, we're good. Smash. Alright, good. Now I just kill a little Babette. Unfortunately, I basically can't critically strike this thing. I did reduce its fortification a little bit, but I don't have precision yet. I don't get precision until later. And so my fortification penetration is bad. It has, I think, like 15,000 ish hit points, something like that. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Oh, I would have won the gloves so bad. But I did get freezing ice on a shield, which is kind of neat. It's not the shield I want, but it is kind of cool. You'll pay for this travesty! Red lack of feeling it's insane amounts of douche damage blamo. Yeah. Exactly. You just drink potions. I don't think sorcerer would be hard at all. Well, this belt of Fun false life. trivia: Lil Baby has an alternative lifestyle as known rapid baby. That's a belt. Also, I don't think that Lil Babette is also the baby, but maybe. It's honestly possible. I have not done the research. Okay, so now we have Reach for the Sky. I'm going to show you how to do Reach for the Sky easily and safely, hopefully. However, it requires no hireling. So, no hireling it is. I'm going to grab my hireling here and tell Mikhail the Pious to sit still. I don't need him right now. I don't need him today. I will need him later, but he sits still for now. Also, I'm an idiot, and I only have 22 health potions, um, which is really bad. So, I should be fine. There's a bunch of shrines, so I should be okay. We have a concert so no one can confirm. Has anyone seen them in the same room? I mean, honestly, it's possible, but I, I don't think that that is the case. Alright, so, uh, you're going to get the ticket so you can go into the event. You need to enter the theater building. And you have to attend the Vaunt presentation. However, there's this guy. He's your informant. What you can do here is you're going to do a whole bunch of things. I'm going to say, detain the mercenaries. Detaining mercenaries basically means that the rest of the Guild the Fallen is not going to damage or attack me. And then I'm going to use that time. Instead of going in, I'm going to leave. Here you guys. I'm taking off. Instead of actually going into the building, you can actually go around the outside, which is pretty fun. Instead of just walking through, which or fighting your way through the middle, save a whole bunch of time and just get all the way out. Going up. And then get on this one next. This purple one. Like so. Going up. And then I'm going to be going up and get the reverse gravity from the outside because I just start flying over here. Like that. You don't actually have to take the outside. You can just go inside. I just was going faster up there. Uh, pro tip number two. Usually you have to take this, this button to float up to there to float up to there. Or if you have enough movement speed, you can go all the way up to there. The problem is some guy runs up ahead of you. And they jump on this button and they stomp on it with their feet and they fly away. Now you gotta wait on cool now. Or do you? See this boat? Go for the boat. Why? Because when you fall, it actually spawns you. Whoop! Right here. You actually beat the person that took the jet from you. Pro gamer move right there. Okay, so what are the more dangerous monsters in here? Uh, the healers are quite dangerous, so you want to be careful about them, because they cast the spell Harm, which is a spooky spell in and of itself. Uh, so they might be healers, but apparently they're actually harmers. But also, there's a monster in here that casts Salt Ray. Salt Ray is a very dangerous spell. It's the Arcanus and the Exorcist, so you want to kill them as quick as you can. Um, so you might think the technician behind me that is casting force damage spells is dangerous. It's actually not. It's these monsters that are right here. Dead. Perfect. 
kill this guy. Also, I should definitely have magic missile resistance and protection, but I don't because I'm an idiot. So we'll figure that one out. Again, downside is I don't have any uh, uh, healing character with me. Um, if I had more potions, this would be perfectly fine, but I don't have any potions. I have 22, so I'm going to be a little mindful about how much damage I'm taking. And I'm going to be a little bit more liberal in my use of second wind for healing. Um, when I get close to half, I'll probably start using second wind. I get myself back up. I just also need to make sure I'm using second wind as a um, self-preservation tool. There actually are two shrines around here that are not too bad. I'm actually going to use my second wind right now. These guys make me uncomfortable. The, the healers and stuff. So, uh, there's a shrine here that I can't get into because the door is locked, which is unfortunate. But there's a shrine downstairs, so it's not a big deal. Didn't harm, but they are healers, not doctors. True. Did something dispel my anger step, or has it really been five minutes? Or did I not turn it on? Because I'm an idiot. I don't know. Anyway, you gotta climb across here. You actually don't have to jump. You can just walk across instead of jumping. I just always jump. Important note, if you fall down here... This will put you into jail. So if you fall over top of Vaunt, it's going to put you in jail. You do not want to fall on top of Vaunt and go to jail. If you do, don't move. Just, if you fall, hands off keyboard. If you don't move, the monsters won't actually attack you, and you can use slash stuck to get out of that area. Demonstrate? No. Because if I make a mistake, I die. So I'm not going to do that. Going to jail is death, so keep that in mind. Die, please. Oh. Yeah, if you're on Hardcore League, Alt F4 is also a good way to get out of that situation. Oh, it's one of these guys that's dispelling magic on me. Okay, I see. Yeah, all my magic is gone here. This is not the best quest in the world to choose to solo through the end of it, but hey, I guess it's what we're doing. Vaunt healer, come back. Why are you so fast and you're casting spells? I have to move slowly when I cast my spells. Okay. Should be alrighty. Also, what's up, DDO cast Raiders? How you guys doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Do be careful about those technicians. Again, the Garyon Hunter at the end of the hallway. Uh, you might be wondering, why do I still have Mikhail the Pious here? Is it really worth it to carry Mikhail the Pious all this way if he's not even going to be here to help? And the answer is absolutely yes. Now use my second wind. I am very nervous about death right now. Build three more. And we're okay. All right, good. So, I'm gonna get the uh, shield one back up because I need shield. Because there's more con reconstructors in here, and there's spellcasters. So I'm gonna kill the spellcasters first. Mission. Where are you? I actually managed to trip him, which is kind of cool. There is another spellcaster in here that has dispel magic. I just don't know where she went. There she is. Exorcist. I already killed the exorcist first. I took a little bit of con damage from the contracts, but it's not a big deal. I get through that. Okay, so now it's just basically killing these guys. Killing these guys is not too bad, and then I can get some access to some shrines. If I want to, I can shrine way ahead of time, but we'll see. Also, one of these is a Shadow of Maybar. Shadow of Maybars are horrific because my character has um, no way to deal with incorporeality, dodge, or blur. So, and it's a golem, so it's just going to take me a very long time to kill it. This is just going to be a very long fight. That's right. I'm glad you read the text. Mikhail Lapias is Dimension Door, which you can use to get out of here. Now, this quest is also complicated because it actually has a uh, Dimension Lock. Once you grab this thing here, you get Dimensional Lock, so your character is unfortunately unable to use any type of uh, Dimension Door or teleporting abilities. Um, but that's okay, so we're going to get through it no matter what. Oh my god, dude. Uh, I'd love to make this exciting, but I don't have a lot going on here other than me missing. Shadow of Maybar is a pain when you don't have incorporeality 
or true seeing. Though I'm a first life character and I didn't pull any of those things while leveling, so what are you gonna do? I almost got him. Oh, the execute. Beautiful. Okay, so I used all my resources on this, so I'm actually gonna use the shrine before I pull this thing. Become a Mr. So You Miss Less. A Mr. So You Miss Less. I don't get it. Yeah, I was never in any danger. It just took a million years to actually kill that monster. <laughs> Anyways. Come in here, use the shrine, it's in the bathroom. I really like that they put rest rest shrines and rest rooms. It's perfect. Also, I like that Vaunt was just doing his speech the entire time. Character can do something they can cry? True. Alright. So, see all these forge rates? When I pull the beacon, it's going to cause all of them to unfreeze, which can be quite dangerous. However, I don't have to deal with any of that, because instead, I can come in here... Summon my hireling, Mikhail the Pious. And then Mikhail, oh great and wonderful Mikhail, um, is going to uh, cast the Lesser Dragon Mark of Passage. By doing so, now the Dimension Door exists. Now, I have a Dimensional Anchor. Dimensional Anchor says this area is uh, magically protected from teleportation effects. You can't teleport. But the Dimension Door is already there, so it doesn't matter. Allowing me to skip out to the beginning of the quest. Goodbye, Mikhail. Thank you for your help. And instead, I'm going to summon Larifé Dorette to help me out to the rest of the quest, because she can demolish golems pretty good. How is my sword getting damaged? So when you attack monsters um, with weapons, the weapons have a chance of receiving durability damage. Um, so that's how your sword gets damaged. That's just, that's just how the video game works. Casters will... Casters can. Again, if you have the right preparatory materials, um, you're able to get around that. Give you damage protection against those items. Sure, but the cost is not having to repair semi-regularly, and the cost of repairing is, like, not a big deal. Um, you could use Fade Arc Illusionist, which gives you the ability to um, imbue with shadow, and imbue with shadow would then allow you to prevent your weapon from taking any weapon damage. The problem is I'm playing a pure fighter, your fighters, unfortunately, don't have um, the access to the Fade Arc Illusionist tree, unless you take a feat to get access to Fade Arc Illusionist. But I didn't really see the value in that. The other option would have been to take um, Item Defense, which negates potential item wear. But I also didn't want to do that, because I'm playing on Hardcore League. So I wanted to take the more kind of throughput heavy things first, the things that give me, like, defense and prevent me from dying. So, like, hit points, physical resistance rating, whoopsie, armor class, um, as well as damage. So... Uh, killing the monsters faster. As I said, having to repair outside of combat and outside of the quest is not that big of a deal because I would much rather have to repair outside of the quest because I didn't take that enhancement instead of having to make a new character because my character died because it's Hardcore League. That would be way worse. <laughs> if I think of the time loss to like going to the vendor to repair every once in a while, the time loss is way lower than having to, you know, Build a new fighter. Maybe it's worth it. I don't know. Um, this is kind of what I was stuck with. Hey, what's up? Golems. Now I pull the golems together so they're nice and tight. Perfect. Hit him with the old trip. And start beating up these golems. levels you ignore durability. Yeah, this character is likely going to be using Divine Crusader. I think Divine Crusader is pretty good. It's either that or Legendary Dreadnought. I don't know the correct answer. No matter what, it's using uh, Fate Singer for the first several levels. I've mentioned this many times before, but Fate Singer if on pretty much every melee is the GOAT for uh, levels 20 to 26. It's just kind of better. Okay, so Sunder reduces a monster's armor class when they fail it, so they get a save. If they fail, it, their armor class goes down and their fortification goes down. Improved Sunder makes them lose more armor class and more fortification. And Divine Sundering out of the um, Divine Crusader tree makes them lose even more armor class and even more Sundering. That's it. We're done. Get up. Get up, Captain Margan. Captain Margan. Beautiful. I got an armor piece, and it's the spell power one. 
Oh, this is not what I wanted. Oh, I wanted the repair amp one that had the health on it. This even gives less armor class. It's, it's just worse than mine. Oh, that's really funny. All right, well, you know what they say. Life is pain. I did say I wanted a docent, and I did say I would take any docent, so that's on me for not being specific enough. Um, I should have just, like, told the, the game more of what I specifically wanted. Because it was like, oh, you want any docent? Here you go. Like, ah, oh, thanks, game. Well, anyway, I'm going to grab the Saga bonus here and see how many more quests I need to do to get to the level cap. Feels silly not to make you Vader Collusionist? Yeah, it's on me. It had the spell power all along. It was always there. Oh, uh, I should have noticed. All right. Uh, how many items do I have left? Spots? 46 slots? I don't need to sell. We're good. I need 54,000 XP to level. Mm, I can do a couple quests in the cogs. Cogs aren't too bad. Uh, Lair Fey is still good on time. Yeah, we're good. Scavenger Hunt um, has oozes, which are very annoying. Do I have other weapons for dealing with oozes? I do have a Bastard Sword for dealing with oozes. And a hireling for dealing with oozes. Oh, I need potions. Thank you. Got my potions. And do predict. Yep. Do all epic destinies add magical training feet at core one? All the magical epic destinies do that. So when you get into epics, you can then take like one point in fate arc or uh, you know fate singer or um, whatever. All the other ones. The exalted angel or draconic incarnation or magus of the eclipse. And then I can have access to Fader Occlusionist. I still don't want to do that, but that is an option. How about the new quests? Oh, they are 16, aren't they? Are they dangerous? I don't think they're that dangerous. Um, One of them is dangerous for sure, the plant one, because everything casts um, Winterbolt. But yeah, I get, I'm down to do a couple of the new ones. That sounds good. I just need to buy potions for sure, though. Spider-Man is best lawyer man. I don't know if I want to do the lawyer quest. Even doing it the fast way, the combat route, it still takes a very long time. Still like 15 minutes. All right. So oil of serious repair. Hey, guess what I need? I need 84 of these potions, please. At some point, I'll be able to heal myself properly, but, you know, it is... What it is. 60 more of these. 45 of these. Hmm, potions. I bet faster than the speech option. Uh I don't know. I tried it out. Does it isn't it like if you fail the speech option, you have to um fight anyway? I haven't done that quest that many times. But there's a lot of, like, delays. There's a lot of, like, back and forth. But yeah, I'll try it out. See how it goes. Are there any good items out of those I quests? Uh, hmm. Couldn't tell you. Let's do it. More grave. I mean, worst case scenario, I die. Like, get that out of the way. Apologies if this has been asked before, but will you continue to epics? No, I'm going to continue to epics. Going up to 32, baby. Maybe not 32, but definitely 30. 32, we'll have to see. His generous donations make our expedition possible. Final quest is a bastard sword? Yeah, but it's not the best bastard sword. It has a bunch of augment slots, which is cool, but I'm on hardcore, so getting augments is a little more challenging. Oh, I just fight their doubts, true. So I go, do you doubt my case? Let me show you what for. Well, it doesn't insta kill you? Yeah, the final quest isn't that hard. I just don't really want the sword, that's all. Um, so this quest has a bunch of bear traps. There's nothing really scary you need to know about this one. It's mostly a bunch of bear traps. There is also a trapped chest. I will show you the trapped chest, but I'm not going to, like, go try to loot it because it's locked as well. 
Trap Dan locked. Anyway, you gotta come in here, then a bunch of ads spawn, and then you gotta kill them. Uh, so don't just run away. I've seen people, like, screw up the quest because they basically got to the end without killing all the monsters in here, and then they didn't examine the church. The Maybar Manifest Stone makes it clear that the eye must be somewhere in the area. Yeah, you can avoid the traps. You can, yep. I'm just, you know, playing fighter, so I don't really... No need to. The 13 is a good-looking sword. No doubt about that. Very true. 13 is a very good-looking sword. It's very pretty. And by pretty, I mean terrifying-looking, but, you know... Hey, that counts for something. I'm gonna be, like, you know, an amazing knight, an incredible fighter. Probably a good idea, huh? I have a cool-looking sword. Alright, so there are bear traps on the exits of this little hamlet. You'll hear the sound, the familiar sound of, like, ka-chink, ka -chink, as these guys are getting stuck in their own bear traps, because I guess managing uh, traps can be difficult when skeletal foot soldiers are not intelligent. Rats, and then I ran into the trap. Can I second wind out of the trap? What do you think? Oh, you cannot second wind out of the bear trap. But I was curious. Because you can second wind out of a lot of things. Like, second wind disabled, or gets rid of curses for some reason. So I wasn't sure if you'd be able to second wind out of the bear trap, but apparently, uh, no, you can't. Um, also, when we were doing this one on the first day, we actually, it was really funny, the game bugged out. Well, it wasn't really funny, but the game bugged out and we couldn't actually progress past here because the door never opened. And we were like, ah, screw this, we'll go do another quest because we needed just a little bit of XP. From the Platinum Bat and Sword. Best is from another man's treasure. I don't really want to farm another man's treasure in epics. Really aggressive and dangerous. That's an option, though. I don't hate it, but I don't really want to do that. Alright, so now we come down here. And so, if you come down this little well thing, this is where you go. If you keep going down here, there's an opening with a chest, and there's traps all around here. So just be careful if you want to go for the chest. The chest is not a named item chest. It's literally just a chest. So, like, go for it at your own risk. It is definitely not a necessary chest to go for. So if you are inclined, you can. But, it's again, it's just a regular chest. Yeah, keeping the Borderlands weapon, I think, is the play to replace this one. Hidden hand prisoners, eh? Get them out of here. I like that the hidden hands are different names, like the fingers are the ranged characters and the grasps are the spellcasters. Good theming. I like it. With the lever pulled, the doors to the armory. How much quest or XP does this give? 13k? Honestly, not that bad. I'm not really doing a lot of the optionals in here, so I could be if I wanted to get a you know, higher XP percentage, but it's all right. All right, that opens this door to the Quell. Now, Quells can be a little bit dangerous um, if you're not prepared for them, especially because they can cast spells. And on top of that, they a lot of negative spells as well. And they also turn off your spell casting if you're a divine character at all. Fortunately, I'm a fighter. I just fight. No paladin here. Get him out of here, Brother Carrion. Also, uh, if you don't know, if uh, reading the story, this guy is actually uh, the priest of the town who was turned into a quell. So, rip, Brother Carrion. Poor guy. Display toggle for receiving your loot from your class. Will that increase your ability to pull a bastard sword? Um, if depending on your class, yes. Actually, pretty much always yes. Because bastard swords are not particular to any individual class. So if you have class-specific loot, you probably will never see a Bastard Sword. Maybe on a fighter, but I wouldn't expect that to be the case. Anyway, I know I just beat this guy up. He's very cool. Commander Vishral's awesome. He's got this cool, like, fire sword. I love it. He's got the red dragon armor all over his body. There's actually a docent that drops out of here, which is kind of cool. So, you never know. I might get something neat. Major Domain Extension deals with the planar orbs rather than the infinite plane pages. Well, Runt, that's that's the whole point. There was the planar eye stuff that was happening before who was that was coordinated by Vecna, and then Vecna did the big reveal, and then this entire quest chain is about the planar orbs in Vecna. So I would not be surprised if that was the case. Nothing. 
Before some other malefactor tries to use it for uh, is Bastion's Word or is Quarterstaff Monk decent? I want to try playing one. Yes, Quarterstaff Monk is very, very strong. Big fan. Love Quarterstaff Monk. It's just so good for leveling because you just go strength and just beat everybody up. All right. What else do we got here? So give me an item. I got nothing. Cool. All right. Let's do order in the court. I don't remember how difficult this quest is. I'm sure it's fine. I just know this quest is really long. The only downside of this quest is it's just the longest one of them all. You step into the lavishly decorated entrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barrington Worthridge's penthouse suite. Apparently, he keeps the eye of Dante locked away hmm. in the I'm trying to remember the puzzle and how you solve it. Did they ever add the solution to the actual quest or no? Remember that was a problem when I did this on the previous server where it was like um, this puzzle solutions weren't anywhere, so you just had to just guess at it. You ran the quest. If, if I recall correctly, they're both like two turns or something. Hmm. No. Red is thing. Okay. Oh, right, they're broken. It's the wrong way. Right. It's reversed. The puzzles were set up wrong. I remember now. Grab the Eye of Donvi. There we go. I have to get the evidence. Should be good. They still didn't fix it? Yeah, I know. That's kind of disappointing. The quest has been out for over a month, I think. When did this when did this pack drop? It was before Char or before the Hardcore League. Definitely about over a month. I don't think that's broken though. Was it just supposed to be tricksy and give you the wrong information? Is that the assertion? That it's not supposed to tell you what the right answer is? Does opposites attract? I mean, maybe. I just assume that it's wrong, because the DDO doesn't do very much stuff like that where you have to like figure out and puzzle it and use your brain. effective at high difficulties. I don't know. When you hit people for over 100,000 damage, it doesn't really matter. Monk is pretty good. Big fan. It's important to know, I think your experience is going to vary based on, like, the people that you play with. So, like, I play on Arganesson. There's a lot of melee players on Arganesson. And, um... Even specifically, like, in my guild, it's pretty much exclusively melee players. So we have a very different experience than I think a lot of people will have, where when we do, like, R10s and stuff, it's almost just all melees. But then if you go to other servers, it's almost exclusively just spellcasters. People playing, like, a lot of druid and alchemist and what have you. But there's something about Argon and There's just a lot of melee players on there. Um, and so, you know, you see, it, it like, it's server-dependent, the experience that you're going to have. I would say that. The thing about staff builds is you kind of just need to have, um, what do you call it, uh, the Staff of Shadows. If you don't have Staff of Shadows, it can be a little bit tedious. Uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to remember exactly how to do this quest, and it is screwing with my brain. Leveling, but think more melee at camp. Melee is fun. That's the thing. Melee just feels really good. You just get to get up, go up in somebody's face and start beating them down. The thing you have to just be worried about when you play as a Henshin Mystic, like you also have fantastic like party support because you're able to just constantly AOE uh, heal everybody, which is really nice. Um, the thing you have to be careful about when you play as a Henshin Mystic 
is placement of your um, Cauldron of Flame. So Cauldron of Flame is an effect that you basically press a button and your character stands still. And you start blasting out this Cauldron of Flame that deals damage around you. While you're standing in the cauldron, you also gain a huge amount of damage. You gain, uh, I think it's plus five to hit in damage, as well as one critical multi. So it's pretty good to have. Um, but you need to make sure that when you are using it, you want to use it when it's most valuable for you. I think what will happen to a lot of people is they will use um, Cauldron of Flame, and then their tank or whoever it is pulls the monster out of the cauldron, and then if you leave the cauldron, it disappears. So good use of cauldron is something that takes a lot of practice. No, that's just a that's just a book. It's more like a story clue that tells you he's you into Vecna. Yeah, I would also say that if you're gonna be TRing at 30, or like if you're just doing it to TR and not to play at endgame, you don't need to be a pure monk. I would go 18 monk, one uh, rogue, one favorite soul. Get the wisdom trance at a rogue or out of uh, favorite soul. Get uh, the attack speed at a rogue. The attack speed from the capstone is good, and the capstone is very powerful. It's just not something you necessarily need. Okay, how do I open this door? I don't remember how to open the door. You going to kill that monster? Oh, it's unlocked now. Okay, good. All right, I wasn't sure. I was not sure. Your favorite with the one level of favorite soul? You can, although you don't have anything that requires you to use a favorite weapon as a favorite soul. Or like as a monk. So it's not super relevant. Ah! Maybe alone? There it is. The illusion. Alright, we're done. Alright, so I got all the evidence I need. No, I didn't. I'm still missing a piece of evidence. Um shoot. Oh, I get a key here, right? Another gold key. Thought I, that was all the evidence I needed. Hmm. All right. Okay. What's in here? Evidence. Uh huh. There we go. A lever. Gonna lead to something secret. That lever is gonna open up a secret door or passageway. It's gonna lead me to evidence. Aha! A scorched note. Perfect. We're good. Now I can go to court. Wait, is that the right illusion? You can use the gold key for the kids' room? Mm hmm. I wonder how high you can get your attack speed on quarterstaffs with epic destinies and multi-classing. It's just 15% increased combat style. player two monk staff builds yeah like i said staff is uh it's a lot of fun the downside to staff builds and especially when you play a monk is that magic resistance rating for like the high end game can be difficult okay so i need to convince the jury with my words that's the fastest one somebody said probably bring that into the stand here you go and then i gotta tell him a compelling story um now that you have but yeah, you deal with the low magic resistance rating, but it's really not that big of a deal because through the leveling process, you won't experience it. Esteem, jury. Um, secret notes are never good. If they have to get a secret, there's something wrong. Boring. Whoops, I did it wrong. All right. Didn't like that. All right. Uh, form a client. Oh, uh, great. Good job. Down with Worth Ridge. Yeah, won the jury. Thanks, dude. Great job, jury. State your case. Uh, also, um, considered. Boom. I'm rooting for you. There we go. I did it. I convinced the jury. Perfect. Ready to give your speech. As you begin. Grab some more evidence. I think it is actually faster to do the jury route. That sounds right because this is going pretty fast. Assuming you don't click the wrong things. You should make sure when you talk, you don't sound like an idiot, which is how I usually sound. So it's very difficult for me. Jury ponders your words. Okay. That's not what I meant. Don't twist. Hmm. Bring this money. It seems hidden room. There must be something nefarious. I've been making excuses, money, but I don't believe him. Money makes the world go round, and money makes his case go round. I never said. Set the stage. Let me set the stage for you, audience. This guy did a bunch of crimes, and he did them, and we're gonna catch him. Stage set. Game set and match. Checkmate. 
judge finishes questioning the defendant. This quest is actually very entertaining if you have the chance to do it. Just only do the whole thing one time. Only do like the entire quest um, the slow way where you do everything one time. I would not recommend doing it every time. If you do everything, you get an extra named item chest at the end of this, so I could. But yeah, I don't want to do that. Great quest though. Really fun. Never will still be up tomorrow or is it going down? They said until the 22nd, so I assume, or 21st, so I assume it'll be through the day. Although tomorrow is the daily reset, so they probably will take it down. Yet more lies. Further to get away with it. A few gold missing here over there, a few platinum over there, but I scoured through the page. You know what I found? More, yet more lies. That's right. You continue your speech with more confidence. Um, here we go. I love the answer. It's like, I'm no economist. But 2 plus 2 equals 4. And that this ledger doesn't add up. Um, the defendant is many things, but an honest man is not one of them. Ledger is missing key information. Keep that in mind as you debate the guilt. That's right. He's guilty. Guilty. Execute this man. Guilty. Guilty. The jury considers you. Great job. Uh, I'm done. Thanks. We're done with this trial. Kill him. Kill him where he stands. Unfortunately, we don't kill him where he stands. Because I have to kill these guys where they stand. Okay, good. I was hoping I would be able to stun the genie before it was able to turn invisible, and that was good for me. Oh, there's another genie, and it's a shadow of Maybar. No, it's like the worst monster I can have ever fight in this whole quest. No. Oh, why have they done this to me? Also, I don't know when I got to spell magic, but I guess I got to spell magic. I hate genies because they're invincible. They can't take damage while they use their stupid genie form. And then this one has all the extra defense from being a shadow of Maybar. Pretty bad. The quest is a Johnny Depp trial reference. I don't know if that is the case. It might be. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really pay attention to the whole trial. I didn't really care too much. I'm really confused why so many people did get into it. I mean, obviously, because it was like, you know, it was on front page news. Watching the OJ Simpsons trial all over again, but with way, way, way lower stakes because it was a civil lawsuit and not criminal. But whatever. Worthridge scowls at the judge. As I said. I'm just holding on to that for a all right. friend. Named item, please. You've Something good. Ooh, bracers that aren't named. Cool. One more. What, does that really surprise you? I don't really get invested in, like, pretty much any type of drama. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope that's not that much of a surprise. Now that the Sphinx has announced their ruling, the eyes close. You leave the court. Only to find Worthridge. Local farmer. All right, local farmer, growing pains. Let's go. It's because it was entertaining. I guess. Thought you could sneak in here and steal the eye without being known. I don't know. The way what I took from it, maybe this is like my um, compassionate side talking, is that it seems like there were some people involved that had really screwed up their own and each other's lives, and. It was all just being put on display for the entire public eye. And at the end of the day, there was literally no winners from this case. In my opinion. Like I read I read up a little bit afterwards, and it just seems like there's really no winners. Like other than the money exchange, but like you know, all the people involved in this lawsuit are millionaires, so it doesn't matter. Like, oh no, they lose or gain some money. The money doesn't matter. It's all about like the perception, the public perception, and also like feeling of self-worth and value so like yeah the internet won like everyone got to be entertained which is really i guess what matters but like the human beings involved didn't really win it's my takeaway from that i guess What's up, Monkira? How are you doing? Yeah, the giant chipmunks? They're they're very cute. Cute chipmunks. I'm sorry, cute chipmunks, but you have to go. I'm sorry, you gotta go to the farm. <laughs> oh, wait, we're already on the farm.
Well, it was like the, I just remember the whole thing about the trials. It was all centered around like, you know, the different like levels of abuse allegations that they were labeling at each other. But it could have been pretty obvious to pretty much anybody in the case that both of the people, or not anybody in the case, but anybody that was like actually watching. And the reason why there was also damages done to both sides, or like on that went both ways. Obviously the, you know, Johnny Depp's team uh, were more uh, successful in the lawsuit. But it's pretty obvious that both of the people that are involved are like heavy victims of each other's abuse. You know, Johnny Depp being like a major substance abuser and raging alcoholic probably wasn't easy for anybody to deal with. And then the, all of the conduct of Amber Heard was also probably really bad. So it was basically just taking like all of the bad things that these two people did to each other in horrible states of vulnerability and then putting them on the public stage and diminishing it and leveling up for, or layering out for ridicule. I don't know. It's just the whole idea seemed kind of bad for me. I don't really like it, just from the at uh, the outset. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, it basically makes me think, I'm like, man, I'm so happy that, number one, that's not a situation that I'm in. And someday, when I become ultra mega famous, mega famous stream Tom, I'm not going to be caught up in any of this type of drama. No, no, no. Your dog stepped on a bee? No, that sucks. I'm actually very fortunate. Never been stung by a bee. Not in my life ever. I am immune to bee stings. And by immune to bee stings, I mean I just I haven't been stung by a bee, so I don't know. These are red names, so I can't stun them. Yeah, some people are allergic. I actually don't know if I'm allergic to bee stings. I'm allergic to pretty much every animal, so it wouldn't be a surprise to find out that I'm allergic to bee stings. Um, but yeah, I've never been stung by a bee, so I actually don't know. Uh, this quest, by the way, is very straightforward. You just kind of run up this tree, go inside, and then fight the monsters inside the tree. Um, my biggest piece... Oh, it's so cute! Look at the little squirrel. So, uh, my biggest piece of advice in this one is don't fight in this room. They tell you you can walk on the branches because the foliage is so thick. Yeah, don't do that. Um, just come in here and fight in here. Let the monsters chase you down. That's my advice to you. I have not died, so therefore I am immortal as far as I know. Easy clap. Absolutely, that's how that works. Empirical evidence, dude. Haven't died yet. This is towards your future success. Oh, thanks, Deadshot. Appreciate that. Thank you for the bits. It's very kind of you. Well, it hurts. Not too bad for you. Wife is allergic? Yeah. I've heard that people, when they're allergic, they get, like, screwed up. Gotta get that EpiPen ready. You never know when the bee is gonna be around the corner. I don't know. I was with somebody during the summertime, and they were wearing flip-flops, and we were walking through, like, a park, and they stepped on a bee, and then, apparently, that was not a good experience for them. Yep. Apparently I've been alert, but I don't know to what. I guess I've just been running past a couple swarms. I'll bump that hype train. Smile. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Rain Man. Appreciate it. The hype train, it's going. Oh my god. I mean, I am pretty excited. This character is almost about level 20. This quest will give me level 20, and uh, this is the solo fighter build, so I've been playing this character by myself on a hardcore league, and it's been pretty good. Um, I didn't do any farming, because farming items is boring. I didn't really do any, like, I am out of precaution, other than just, like, preparing for quests. Um, I didn't use anything from the shared bank. I only used items I picked up and the gold that I picked up. And I made very few trades in the auction house. So I'm really excited this character got all the way to level 20 on Hardcore League pretty handily. And hopefully the point of the series will give people some ideas as to what they should be doing and uh, ways they can get through quests they might not already know about. Also, Bridges gives some thanks for the bits. It's a lot of bits, dude. Really appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying your day. And enjoying the stream, and maybe learning something from Solo Fighter Adventure. Mm, Solo Fighter Adventure. I think one of the reasons why I'm very excited to post like the whole video series, as opposed to just like clips, or like posting just a, a truncated section of it, but the whole video series, is I think a lot of people assume, when they see the videos that I put out online, will assume that like, you know, you just kind of go into the quests and then the things happen. But seeing what happens in the background, so like, the amount of time I town, go refill my potions, make sure I have the proper potions, go buy hirelings, do all this other stuff before I go into the quest. Like, those are the things you don't really see when I post like the curated videos about the builds. And I think that is the part that will be not so much shocking, but the most interesting to many 
because it's how do you prepare for these adventures? How do you mentally know what's going to be coming up next? How do you make sure you have all the items necessary to figure out and solve whatever's coming up next? It's going to be minus 24 degrees Canadian? Oh, geez, that's cold, dude. It's pretty cold, cold weather. What do you mean that stepping on a bee is bad XP? Oh man, I'm never gonna reach a level 30 at this rate, big satch. No, it's bad XP for humans. Horse, you can step on it. As a horse, you can just stomp all over because you have hooves. They can't sting your hooves. The door handle, the open button, it's hiding in the backseat. It was really exciting. Oh, dude, that would, that would be bad. Also, Xana, dude, thanks for the big It's really appreciate that, you guys. It's very kind of you. I have enough cows in your feet that I didn't feed. I stepped on a beat to break through your callus. Damn, I don't have any calluses on my feet. I am definitely a, I'm a, I'm a staying indoor sort of feller. So my calluses are gone. When I was a kid, I used to run around all the time in the summertime, run around in the pavement and all sorts of other stuff. I had calluses like you wouldn't believe. But as a grown up, no, I don't have any calluses anymore. Also, of course, thank you so much for getting out 10 subs. Quest very, very kind completed. of you. Unbelievable level of support. I really appreciate it. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Damn, dude, you're just the the show of kindness goes on and on. Quest also, that's heroic completed. XP achieved. Level 23 just died, Carnage Reaper. Oh no, Isabel. Why are you doing low level Reapers? Or low epics Reapers? They're so dangerous. Oh no. RIP, dude. Welcome to the stream team. So many people. Meaneth, Vyth, uh, Asirus, uh, Fistine, Puff the Bear, Akadi, Rix Richard, Mordecai, Ambivalent Bastard, and Mistwalker. Thank you so much, of course, for getting you 10 subs. That's insanely kind of you. It's a lot of subs, man. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of subs. So I'm very grateful for the support. Hope you're enjoying the day. Hope you're enjoying the stream. And I pulled nothing. You get nothing. You lose. Good day. Quest Gosh, dang completed. It. What items are even dropping this quest? I'm just googling it. But thank you for the support. This is very kind. Uh, Lamanian hunting dagger. Don't care. Signet of Lamanian bad. Thresher's pendant. Physical sheltering. Healing amp. Resistance. Spell saves. Oh, good. Boots of the Rose with movement speed, deception, and hide. Oh, well, the movement speed's nice. Oh, man. Oh, well. Quest is over. Oh, here we go. Elementally warded bracers. I don't know. But seriously, dude, thank you for the support. I hope you're feeling good. Thanks, dude. You know, minus 40 is the same in CNF. I did know that. It's very cool. You see, my city, city of Ottawa, goes down to minus 40 degrees Canadian. And so then I tell people that, you know, it's minus 40 Canadian. They're like, oh, how cool is that in freedom? I'm like, it's actually minus 40. It's one of those fun little facts. Minus 40 degrees. Universally, everybody says, damn, that's too cold. Those are the temperatures in outer space. No, those are just temperatures when you're not in Arizona. Where's your weather? Hold on, we're almost there. Almost there. Level 19. Level 20. Solo, fighter, hardcore league. Got him. I don't know my last quest. Uh, it's uh, precision. I need precision. Mmm, baby. I got it. I'm feeling good. Oh, feeling hyped. That excitement. Overwhelming my brain stem. Feels good, dude. Heck yeah. Oh, I'm a rogue. Oh, that's right. Fighter is the best class. That's two times I've leveled fighter in hardcore. Why oh, do I do this to myself? I'm a rogue. Also, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. That is very kind. The hype train is now, has been chugging down Quest the station. Completed. Choo, choo, choo. Going at full speed ahead all the way to the end of the tracks. And I'm so grateful for the support. I hope you're enjoying uh -huh. today. Everyone is feeling fantastic. My goodness gracious. And that is plus six confidence bonus oh, of strength. I'm a rogue. I could have just gained seven or eight points of strength for leveling up to 20. Actually, oh, 10 points of strength I'm because I got plus two to all ability scores from the fighter caps on alacrity. That's crazy. Quest, seriously, dude, thank you so much for the support. Welcome to the stream team. Apulu Felgar, Chief Jimin, uh, Dekires, oh, Kyle Red, uh, Drive Delia, Mentally Insane 666, Senor Stalebred, Phantom Stranger. Our Persia and E Dreaming. Amazingly good. Fantastic. Build your muscle and your inner thigh while gifting subs. Hey man, that's what happens. You really like hammering the keyboard, gifting those subs, and then boom, inner thigh just goes out on you. Or you put a half a point in skills, have to start again. I did do that. I wasn't paying attention. I was just excited about leveling. True. I actually very much did that. 
Fighter did get much more survival. Actually, I barely used Second Wind. Second Wind, I only used it as an emergency tool. For the most part, I was just drinking potions. It was really this enhancement that saved the day, like Encourage. Um, potions kind of went the entire way through on Fighter for me. So, very, very good. Plus, the Stalwart Defender tree gave me a lot of defense on top of that. Um, you know, Stalwart Defender making my weapon a plus eight and my shield a plus eight, which all was nice. Also, the extra armor class on my armor piece from that. So, my character is actually sitting at 70 armor class, which is not too bad. Um, especially if I can get like a more modern shield, it'd be fantastic. I could farm out like a shield of the scorpion, um, or something like that, like a large shield out of the desert, which wouldn't be too bad, but we'll see. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly how I used it. It was mostly just like when I was about to die, boom, you just second wind and you, you're out of it. It's also cool because it breaks you out of basically everything. You can use it while crowd control, you can use it underwater, and it removes pretty much every effect. It also removes curses. It doesn't say that it removes curses, but it removes curses, which means it actually removes Mugmirot perfectly. So, which is very, very, very cool.